Hello, I'm Tom Terry. I'm the president of the Board of Ocean Pines Association, and I was elected to the board in 2010. Hello, I'm John McLaughlin. I'm vice president of the board, and I've been a member since 2008. I'm Pete Gomsack, and I was elected to the board in 2009. I'm the treasurer of the organization, and uh, so I'm in my second year on the board. Hi, I'm Rick Handelman. I was appointed to the board by the gentleman in 2010. Hi, I'm Les Purcell. Uh, I'm the secretary of the board, uh, and I'm serving my fourth term as we speak. Hi, I'm Dave Stevens. I was re-elected re for my second term in 2010. And I'm Ray Unger. This is my second term on the board in Ocean Pines. Just so everybody uh, gets on record, uh, Rick Handelman cannot be with us today due to an illness in his family, so that's why he is not present at the meeting. Um, we move right to public comment. Yes, sir. Right. Name and address. Uh, Richard Waggett, 166 Samuel Road. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit today about uh, what I'm, what potentially might be a health And uh, I ride my bike throughout Ocean Pines, and uh, I always see this smelly liquid come out of the trash trucks. <laughs> all right? Well, I took a look at it. You and mean this contract? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the thing that I found, there are several communities uh, that have had this problem and have looked at the liquid that's coming out of there. And with fecal coliform. Now, I don't know whether that's happening in this community or not, but that's a nasty bacteria. Uh, not only uh, does it, when it comes out, uh, is it there, but it can stay there for up to a day, even after it's dried out. We have kids playing in the street, balls, they pick it up, put it in their mouth, you track it in your house, etc. So what I've done is I've, I've I got a report, and I'll give it to you, yeah. from a TV station in Charleston, West Virginia, mm -hmm. that did a, a complete analysis of it. I have a lab report from them uh, that I'll provide to you. Thanks. But uh, again, the solution to this problem seems to be very easy. I've been in touch with uh, Maryland uh, Department of Environment, Worcester County Department of Environment, and both of them, in my conversations with them, say it's a truck maintenance issue. In the case of West Virginia, and I have a report on that, it was nothing more than a $10 plug. And we've been putting up with this for quite some time. And uh, so I'm going to leave this with you. I know this is uh, an opportune time because I realize that uh, the contract is coming up. And uh, having something in there about the liquid, you have something in there about trash that falls on the street, they have to sweep it up, but there's nothing in there about uh, any kind of liquid and what we're going to do. So with that, I have some, some of my thoughts here, and I'll just throw it out on the table along with the reports. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank very you. Good. Helpful. It's very helpful. Yeah. Thanks. And I will be under the President's Update section be talking about that contract that I promised I would take a look at and you've obviously read it as well. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. it. We else? Hey. Uh, He's got multiple copies uh, of that. Uh, my name is Will I'm uh, I got a little bit popping here. Yeah. You are all some are reading in the paper from Ms. Construction. You put him on an advisor committee over here lately. This is a man a couple of years ago, he wasted a half million dollars for most people. And you people had to go in court to give someone that money back. And that what has something to do with that six million dollar community home. This man was the worstest president in the history of Ocean Pine. And now you all put him in another committee. Not all. I'm very disappointed in that. I hope that you people look it over 
and release that man from that job. I don't think so that he got the ability to be an advisor committee. When he was president, some of you people know that, he sat on in the chair with Terry sitting, he had Mr. Moore sitting beside him. If somebody asked him a question, he had to ask Mr. Moore. The man didn't even know what the bylaws were. And now you got him on another committee? If it was not for, Mar for Marty, we would have a $6 million community hall and we'd be paying $2,000 probably a year on our due. I ask you people to release that man from that position. I thank you for, for my time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Go over the agenda here. Uh, we've got approval of the minutes, county commissioner's report, general manager's report, facilities update, old business, new business, my update, CPI violations, public comment, press adjourn and close. Any additions or changes? I'd like to make a change to the agenda, please. Um, I'd like to move old business immediately to the top. Uh, because of the subject matter and the yeah. number of folks standing. Number of people right. here. Yeah. Um, so I move, so moved to do that. Second. Uh, hang on a second, let me question, okay? All of old business, I'm gonna add something to old business or just the Carrollton Lane perhaps in the dog park. Well. So in other words, un under old business is also resolution MO2, MO8. I'm gonna add another item to it. Uh, I understand this, so you're trying, we're trying to accommodate the people where they're here for Dog Park and Carrollton Lane, right? So I'm simply suggesting less if we move those two items up and then let the rest of the old business fall where it You can uh, amend that, yeah. Okay, is that, a, is that a fair? Yeah, yeah. that's a fair amendment. Okay. I'll second that. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Comments? So we'll do that? Yeah, that's fine. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, thing here. Yes. I, uh, yeah? I asked one thing to be put on as a discussion issue, and that had to do with the... Uh, uh, the movement of the fence okay. at the pool. It was a simple question. The question was, when you move the fence, currently uh, children are allowed to eat in that section that has the tables and chairs. Uh, when we move the fence, that all becomes an adult area. Will children still be allowed to eat in that area? Well, you're just suggesting that that go as a topic of discussion under old business? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's going to be covered okay. in the GM report, so all I don't right. think you need that. Okay. Well, we, well, well uh, we can add it, and, and the then we need if it's covered, we won't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I owe an answer to a constituent. Yeah. Tom, I have one thing I'd like to add to do business. We've talked about it. Um, I'd like to share with the board uh, some information I have relative to some research I did on reserve funds okay. going back 40 years. As <laughs> Tom, Bob Thompson made reference to at the town hall meeting, I spent some time going back 40 years worth, and I, I've got some information I'd like to share on the whole reserve situation and why we are where we are and what, it, what it's been over 40 years. And I'll put that below the election letter. And are we going to discuss the furlough uh, case? I know, the public should be told that it's taken off oh, the yes. table. I'll okay. cover that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. good. No. Just uh, for the agenda purpose, I've rolled most of mine, the facility update and dog park in the GM report, just a That's couple of slides on each just for time sensitivity of it. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Well, then, we're going to need your portion of the dog park before we vote on that, so we may move to that. If you can, can you find that? Yeah. That being able to do that? Okay, sure. Everybody, any other changes, adjustments to the agenda? All right. Uh, let me just do uh, well, the next thing here. Let's move right to. Uh, Carrollton Lane. Carrollton Lane. Yes, sir. Steve. Steve's <laughs> motion is listed first. <laughs> Dave. 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 Poor, poor Steve. You can call me anything. <laughs> I don't call you anything. It doesn't look like you have any <laughs> Okay, I've already uh, uh, submitted this uh, motion to the board. Everybody's seen it. I move that the board decision of May 2011 to establish Carrollton Lane as a true one-way street, in quotes, be rescinded and that the general manager be directed to make any physical changes necessary to establish Carrollton Lane as a two-lane street 
with a level of safety commensurate with that of other Ocean Pines thoroughfares. Further, the general manager is directed to ensure the Carrollton Lane is part of the general easement to the county that covers all of the roads owned by Ocean Pines, and if such is not the case, take the necessary uh, steps to, uh, to make it happen. I'll second that. Yeah, very second in that. Okay, let me... Uh, yeah, I get to go first, I guess, just to give sure. you the background sure. and so forth. The general manager uh, has already provided the board with extensive documentation on the history and background of this issue. Uh, the board has heard considerable testimony from uh, res some residents' groups favoring a change and others who wish to retain the status quo. Basically, the basis for this motion is the, uh, the following. Whether or not the previous decision made by the county in granting the developer the request was within its authority, the Oce Ocean Pines Association was not asked and was not involved at the time and or asked for its approval. The county now states that the OPA is owner of the roads within the general easement is responsible for making this kind of decision. Now an OPA board is not obligated to correct a historical error on its own initiative. We can't say, well, that didn't happen 10 years, so we could, but we're not obligated to say, look, what happened 12 years ago was wrong, we have to correct it. But it does have to respond, I believe, to a substantial group of residents who want it changed and who want it corrected. There are no other streets in Ocean Pines designed to exclusively benefit the residents of that street. Carrollton's not a private road, it's owned by all the residents of Ocean Pines. There's no legal or safety justification for turning Carrollton into a true one-way street, going back to what was proposed at the last meeting. To our knowledge, there are no other uh, one-way streets in Ocean Pines. The traffic issues on Carrollton are just not unique and should be addressed as we do all OPA roads. The OPA Chief of Police, in a written opinion, has recommended that a two-way street open at both ends be considered as preferable to the unique, difficult-to-enforce situation we have now. Now, it may appear to some that this motion is about selecting the wishes of one group of residents over the group issues of another. That is to say, are we inconveniencing people by making them take 30 more seconds to go around or whatever it is, a quarter of a mile? And however that may seem, it's not true. The Colonial Village residents on Carrollton Lane, through no fault of their own, have very good reason to believe that a preference was given to them. The developer gave assurances backed by the county. Successive OPA boards took no initiative to change the status. And I feel pretty confident in saying that this board fervently wishes that we could just do the same thing. But the situation has been challenged, and I believe that the proper course is to, to decide this issue as we would have had we been involved from the very beginning. There's no doubt in my mind that we would apply the same standards as we do for every other street and community in Ocean Ponds, and we would not have uh, acceded to the developer's request at that time. Comments? It's been moved. It's been moved and seconded. And seconded. Second. We're in discussion. Okay. Obviously, um, I'm going to comment. Uh, I have a uh, another motion, which is listed as number two, which uh, also rescinds the earlier one, but um, proposes that we keep the status quo, in essence. And uh, I have uh, submitted, uh, as, as Dave, uh, my proposed motion with the background, with the discussion. There's been much of discussion and, and we have been provided, as David suggested, much material. And I understand how people can see this very, very differently. I believe it should be keep the status quo because the people in good faith bought those homes. The people in good faith bought those homes and lots based not just on some promise of a developer, 
that developer followed through with what he said he was going to do. As Dave has rightfully pointed out, the developer sought and gained the approval of the county for what it was he proposed. I take the position that those people in good faith ought to be protected. Now, if there's a safety issue, if there are lots of issues, times change. And so what may appear to be acceptable at some point in time may become unacceptable later on based on facts and circumstances changing. In this particular case, however, it's more about the inconvenience of people in driving, as has been acknowledged by many, many people on many different occasions, Dave just referred to it, it's about another 20 or 30 seconds of inconvenience. And in my mind, that doesn't sway me to embrace the argument that we ought to get back to the way it would have been had the developer not uh, developed it this way. One thing that Dave's point points out is we're talking about correcting a historical matter. I don't think it's about correcting anything. There's a preference to be here. It's not a mistake. This was not some willy-nilly decision that was made. The county considered it. The county approved it. Subsequently, a group, many I think, or at least some of the current group that are asking for us to change have made similar requests in the past. And in fact, went down to the county and made that request. There was a formal public hearing by the county. The county decided to take no action at that time. I'm not gonna get into the whys and wherefores. I wasn't there, I don't know. But I do know this, that the appeal was made by people, again, to save 20 to 30 seconds to change the, um, the flow of traffic on that particular road. Subsequently, I think some of the same people, I recognize the names from some of the materials that were provided to us by Bob Thompson, as being the same names that are communicating with us today, approached the previous Ocean Pines board. Long story short, no action was taken. Here we are again, 2011. Same issue, facts haven't changed, same people involved. It's all about saving a little time, 30 seconds. And again, in my mind, if it has become a safety issue and the flow of traffic has to change to accommodate that, that's a different matter. So we all have different opinions. I may be the only one in the room, at least at the table, who has the view that I do, but I do believe that those people who bought in good faith their homes not just on the, and some of the it was just a, a developer with a sales pitch. No, 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 it wasn't that. That developer, as I understand it, did exactly what he should have done. He went down to the county, got their approval. He subsequently was challenged on that. He went down, the county had open public hearings. Some of you in the room attended those public hearings. I've seen the testimony. A decision was made again to reaffirm the original decision. The previous Ocean Pines board was presented with the case. They decided not to take action, and here we are again. So I don't think we should change it. Um, I think, Dave, what we can't do is change the decision of the people who bought in good faith their homes, their lots. That is a fact. And yes, as you point out rightfully, had Ocean Pines been faced with this decision from the very outset, it may well have been a different decision. But then those people would not have been promised something, would not have been made, making a good faith purchase based on a set of conditions and circumstances. Not a promise, by the way. Not some sales pitch, but backed up by the good faith effort of that developer to obtain the necessary approvals so that these people in the room here who bought those properties did so. And I, for one, don't think we ought to change what is now the existing situation. And I'll just conclude it. I do have a procedural question. Yes. You can't approve Dave's motion and approve mine, so there's one or the other, okay? So, well, and, and the, I'm commenting not on my motion, but rather in the discussion phase right. of Dave Stevens' motion. Now so you have the we'll let the chips to, fall wherever you... you do have the option, which we to do an amendment. This is a straight up and down thing, yeah, and, yeah. and so I won't accept an amendment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 it would be I, silly. He has really. the right to ask for and I, yeah. Yeah, No, I understand. And, okay. and I think that's, I agree with Dave. That's, that's not, fair. yeah, it's pretty clear. I'm sure we all know what the rules yeah. are, right? Go ahead. Um, we're going to be damned if we do and damned if we don't on any decision that's made. 
But with everything that's been going on, I think people want some kind of a decision from this board. They've been looking for it for a long, long time. At the time the county uh, reviewed all this and looked at it, Mumford's Landing really didn't exist. All those people didn't live out there. There weren't as many people in the apartment, in the condominiums, and that whole area didn't have all the other people. Since this, all this started with Carrollton Lane. I, any time I've, in the last 10 years I've gone to Yacht Club, I went in, made the left turn, went around Yacht Club Drive. Never went down Carrollton Lane. I'm always going down Carrollton Lane now just to see what's going on. <laughs> and, uh, and it's only because of all of this that's been going on to try to make some kind of reasonable decision. So uh, my, I would agree with what Dave is saying, that a decision has to be made. Some people are going to be upset about it, but or I don't believe there's one person that brought, bought over there that wouldn't have bought over there if that would not have been a two-way street. That doesn't uh, make any Judge, sense to me. First off, uh, Ray, we did make a decision. We did. I was going to remind people. Of okay. That. We made the decision last <clears throat> month to make this a one-way street. That would, in fact, be equal for all. If you take a look at Colonial Village, and that's what we're talking about, <clears throat> there is a street outside of that section. Are they, in fact, not authorized to go down that street, Carlton Lane? How does it impact upon them? Are we just dealing with a small portion of folks who are just going to ignore them? To me, the one-way street is, I voted for it because I believe it was the cheapest, less expensive of the answer. There's no need to do any uh, adjustment at the far end. It'll probably keep less boats out of there with trailers because it's a more difficult turn. Um, I see no reason to change my vote, to be honest with you. I just want, want your... So you're, you're saying you're against, <coughs> just so I understand, rescinding the last vote of last month. Yeah. In other words, you want to keep that in place. Yeah. So you would vote against either my motion mm -hmm. or, or if it fails. I don't believe, I don't agree with... Or if it fails, yeah. Pete, uh, Pete's uh, yeah. uh, motion. Okay. Call the question. Well, any other comments? Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I was Mike John. I wanted to remind folks that we did take an action. We did. It was about as popular as I could finish the joke, but I won't. Uh, it wasn't exactly popular what we did. But I will raise the issue that, uh, in my belief, what we were attempting to do was to find a middle ground between two groups that were, at best, had their foot on each other's throat, uh, just to be graphic about it. Uh, that re the reception of that was pretty obvious not only in in the emails we got but the phone calls and everything else uh, and uh, so obviously the two organizations both sides of the argument do not like the decision we made last time so while I would actually agree with John that uh, I don't think we made a bad decision last time but in reality the two groups that are involved in this have both stood up now together hand in hand and said we really don't like what you guys did last time so to me while i my heart of heart says i agree with john that we were trying to resolve a conflict as evenly as we could uh, when both sides of the conflict that you're trying to mediate stand up together arm in arm and say why in the world did you do that uh, then I do think uh, a change has to be made. Uh, the change can be to move it back to where it was. It can be today's motion, which is the one that's on the table. Uh, but I think our past motion, my two cents from listening to the, to the two sides here, is they definitely don't want it left there. Uh, by the way, uh, and I've not heard any compromise from either side of that group uh, on what the solution might be except it's like Texas hold them we're all in uh, we either leave it all the way it is or it becomes a completely two-lane road so we're back where we were yes trying to resolve it and we tried to resolve it and those two sides didn't like it that's that's my two cents I put on the table when it comes to what we did last time I think what we did last time was something that was worth trying I think it was reasonable but when both sides don't like it they're the ones involved in it, not me, I don't live there. Pete. Yeah, addressing that, um, some people say we made the dumbest decision we could have made last time, but 
I don't necessarily agree with that. Anyway, when we put forward that motion last time, uh, Tom has adequately described it, I think. We were trying to bring sides together and get some common out here. And very clearly we did here. And, and I have reached out and, and talked to um, the, some of the Calvin Road people, and uh, clearly what we did is not acceptable. They'd rather have it be as Dave's motion is, I think, in general terms, rather than what we passed at the last meeting, or two meetings ago, maybe now. But two meetings ago. Uh, in, in any event, um, I said at the time that uh, the Calton uh, Lane folks will speak, and if they don't like this, they'll let us know. And I think they let us know that they didn't like uh, our, quote, compromise, if you will. So it is straightforward. Uh, I think Dave's motion speaks to uh, uh, his sentiment and the sentiment of others, and, and mine speaks to at least for mine, and maybe I'm alone. I don't care, but um, I'm gonna, uh, here we are. Bob, you want to add anything in this? No, sure. <laughs> <laughs> the wisdom of our general manager. Just wanted to give you a chance. <laughs> That's a pun. Not that you have a vote, not that you have a vote but I, I would like to add one other comment. Ray? Yes. You've added to the traffic of Carrollton Lane then. From yes, sir, I have. I yes, certainly have. So am. have I. I have been down there more in the last <laughs> month or two than I've the entire time I've lived here. I didn't yeah. to observe yeah. what the uh, book drives. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And that's it's as we should. Good. Has anybody turned in the wrong way just to see what would happen? No, but I turned around three <laughs> times uh, before I got to the sign recently here. Yeah, see, and I was legal. I was legal. Last year. Are you done? <laughs> for the well, moment, last that's a fair comment. Go for the moment, there will be one more yes. thing. Um, I voted against the motion the last time because, well, I won't go into that. I just didn't think it was a smart thing. Um, I made, I brought it up at our earlier meeting that I was hoping that the two sides, or three sides, were actually would submit some kind of a middle of the road that we could look at, that never happened. Um, so I intend now to vote for Dave's motion. So. Any other comments, questions? Any questions on the position? Um, call the question. All those in favor of Dave's motion? Those opposed? Motion passed. Okay. On to the, can you find your... Wait a minute, there's another item on the agenda. My motion. The dog park. Okay. By all means. I'll withdraw yeah. my motion. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Tom. Oh, I thought you meant, yeah, okay, yeah, that one's it. Excuse me, John. Wait, 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 and I didn't catch things. everyone's vote. And I just want to make sure we're clear. Ray, Dave, Les, and myself. Lachlan and Gomsack voted uh, against the motion. John and Pete voted against the motion. Did you vote? Yeah, I voted yeah, for it. Four. Four. It's 4 to 2. Thank you. 4 to 2 with Gomsack and Lachlan. Thank you. Okay. And you've removed your motion from the agenda? Okay. I wouldn't get a second, so I believe well, John might second. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to the dog park, and I'm going to suggest at this point that Bob do his work. Oh, we'll just take a moment. Thanks for coming. Thank you all. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Is this your third horse? Sir, you're first? No, no, no. Somebody left it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any money in it? Yeah. Just leave it, would you? Somebody <laughs> have. Hat. 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 Thank you. Have you got a hat? No. That's mine. That's mine. Oh, that's me. I'm staying. I'm staying. They don't want me to stay, but I'm staying. <laughs> okay. The way we're going to approach this at this point is have Bob carve out of his general manager's report the, uh, the dog of what he has to present to us, and then we will move to the motion, uh, provided you don't want to remove that one as well, as I say smiling. Okay. Unlikely. Unlikely. The dogs are counting. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Here we go. Not the record show we have seats available. Okay. 
Now, did you get a release from these dogs so that they can do it? I did. Yeah, for instance, one of them would be great. Please, you must have just given me Thank you. Thank you. Donka? Can you give me an extra? One, two, one, two. Do I have one? There's an extra. Okay, dog park's been a hot issue, as we all know. I've uh, accomplished two things since we last spoke about it. Uh, one is the report, which is in your hand. Uh, the report gives you background information, uh, the need for the, for the dog park, location, size, fencing options, permits and landscaping, fence, signage, trash bags, estimate cost. The reason I went quick is uh, these are all covered in the report that I've given you. Uh, some things that I want to point out is we did chat, do some, uh, the need was interesting when you do some research to find out how many uh, uh, dog parks are out there. There are other, uh, there are over 600 nationwide uh, and they're continuing to grow. And I wanted to make sure I had that information in there. Also included in your, your um, proposal here, location. And for those that don't have this, the locations up here on the board, just so I, I put, we had the we had the whole site surveyed uh, for two reasons, but it certainly helped us with the dog park. Uh, Manton Creek, this is the community gardens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you turn into Manton Creek, the, the recommendation is to have it at the Manton Creek, Creek location, and, and here's a, a sample layout. Okay, it's in your materials, but I thought I'd put it up and it's up on the board. The other thing that you'll note, just so everyone can see a little better, when you come in, the ball field's over here, okay? Proposal is to put the double gate system here because that, if we put it over here, which we initially looked at, the challenge that creates is, of course, if you put the gate here, what's going to happen? People are going to park along this, this street. We don't have ample parking. However, down here, we have plenty of parking. So by, by you know, considering how we position it with the double gate situation, parking, you know, it, it encourages folks to park over here, and then we put the, the gates here. You notice the park we're proposing, it's a little larger. The red lines are what I'm initially proposing that we do with the opportunity to, to grow the size of the park. You want to explain that again? Yeah, the, this is the yellow is potentially the entire park enclosure. We, we have room for some expansion. However, the, the red lines, the slash marks that I've put in there basically denote the initial size of the dog park. Okay, and it's from a cost perspective. You know, if we start a little smaller, we can always anything that we, you know, with the, if we put the, the, and again, this is an approximate, but if we end up putting the initial fence here, we still have this amount of room if we decide to if it's working, area. we like to grow, then what you do is you take the fencing here, just move it down and buy the sections to fill in. Right. But it gives us the opportunity to put it in, manage it, see how it works, <clears throat> and then gives us room for expansion. Uh, in your in your documentation, uh, there there have been questions of, of cost to do this. You know, you, we can <clears throat> certainly look at putting something in at a, a more economical standpoint, uh, but truth of the matter is, we really live in a, in a great community and chain link fence just is not aesthetically pleasing and has not been part of uh, the normal conditions that we've done with, with our recent um, work in the pines. You know, we, we use the aluminum fencing, which, which is in the proposal here, which I think looks a lot nicer. Um, it's certainly either type of fencing. We considered, uh, when I was looking at wooden fencing, you know, there, there, that's certainly an option as well as uh, vinyl fencing, but the, the best seems like the aluminum or the chain link were the two that we got down to. It's the best two options and the recommendations to the aluminum that matches. If you want examples, sports court pool, swimming racket club pool, right. have the aluminum fencing. That's where, what we've been doing. And I think it's, it just looks nicer overall. This is six foot. Is six, six foot. The recommendation six foot. The you can when you get interior with the gates, you can reduce some of those to a five foot. You can consider a five foot down the center line as well. But the perimeter 
um, the recommendation six. Well, what's that center line for? Uh, the se oh, great question. The center line here, uh, you'll notice in, in the proposal there's four gates. Let me explain the gate system. And again, this, this comes from research looking into it. Four gate system. You come in the first gate, shut it behind you, then you open this gate to let your dog in. Okay? The reason you do that, you just have one gate. When you open that, a dog running free here has the opportunity to, to take off. Uh, so they, all, all of them recommend a, a double mm -hmm. gate system. The center line is because you want to divide the two sections for the very small dogs and the larger dogs. And the recommendation is to do that because that seems to create the most harmony. The real small dogs um, can get overwhelmed by the larger dogs. Yeah. So that's what the center line is. You three gates. You're welcome. We've also included, uh, you know, in the proposal, uh, permitting and site work, uh, landscaping, flowers, benches, uh, uh, signage. You know, we're going to need to put signs up. Uh, I've has, I have some samples in there for you. Trash bag cleanup materials. We've also priced out. Is that a yearly figure for, for the trash bags and the landscaping, or is that uh, the benches? Would, well, a good part of the landscaping are the benches. That would not obviously be yearly. Okay. Uh, we're figuring it, and again, we need to do go a step further and develop the full plan of how we're going to operate the structure. Uh, we've pulled up information from Ocean City, from uh, Salisbury, uh, and, and we're working with, with some community folks. We'll develop a good plan on how we're going to manage the facility. But right now, uh, the question comes up if the community is going to be raising money, if the board's you know, really approved it. Conceptually, the board had said, yes, we have interest in it, but there hasn't been approval. So as the community groups are trying to raise money for it, I try to put firm numbers of what it costs to actually construct it. Now, who actually builds this, puts it in the ground, digs the holes, all that? Where yeah, we, we would use our, uh, we have a contractor, well, it, we have one that's done our other fencing. We would obviously bid out for it, uh, but a contractor would come do the fencing. The rest of it, we you know, we can take care of. Yeah, Robert, the uh, the decision that we have to make is 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 very important on either a yes or no to go forward because the folks that are willing to support it, even financially, are waiting for that decision before they really start putting the dollars in. And by the way, Bert, Sadie and Bertha looked this over yesterday and both approved it. <laughs> now the only, the only thing I not included, is stained. if you look at page, <laughs> were, were those the people I saw, the dogs I saw running up and down the hall right. yesterday? They were if here you here. look at page six, Move there on. is an optional dog watering station to be considered. Uh, we added it because there nothing in, in our recommendation has anywhere for water, um, per se. Uh, but because as you see, the cost at, at almost twenty-five thousand, which you know, um, is is a lot when you're you're looking at something like this. I wanted to make sure we knew that we may have to put a, a fountain, a dog watering station. That would be something down the road. Now again, it'd be wonderful to get donation, but I put it on there just so you know we were okay. thinking about it. Well, the, other side of that <laughs> the Purdue water fountain. The, uh, I'm assuming you'd have to link into the. It's got to be a water line there, so there's construction for a water line to this thing, yes. as well as the, the yes. watering hole for the dogs. We do. There is, wait a second, yeah. We have water at the, the water facility. Yeah. Um, so we, we have the ability to so let me, water if we need one. Let me get this straight. Okay. Right now, current proposal, no water at all in the dog park. That's correct. So if two dogs were, you know, going at it or whatever, you know, the traditional method, from what I understand, I know no, nothing about it personally, but uh, would be to take a hose and wet them down. We're not going to have a hose, right? No. Uh, that's never been, yeah, correct. No, no that's correct. That is correct. I do not have a hose okay. on here to So you're saying, down. well, I don't have dog owners. I mean, you know, yeah. do you or don't you I need a hose? I hose my two down. <laughs> do the other parks, do the other parks have uh, yeah. Uh, Salisbury, for example? No. They don't. Ocean City? They, they carry their water in in jugs, and it seems to work fine for yeah. the temporary uh, solution. I, as I understand the water, it's really a two-fold purpose. One is to allow drinking by drinking. dogs. The other is to, um, to 
the fire hose kind of thing to uh, separate dogs uh, to, to call a problem, right? Mm -hmm. That's what that, you're talking that about. That is correct. Yeah, yeah I, guess, okay. I guess my my inclination is to think, you know, okay, if it, if it's not an issue, fine, but if it were, I'd rather put it in there and approve it. I, I'm <laughs> with you. I'm with you. I think that'd be wise. I mean, and I'm not worried about, you know, I mean, come on. If you trust who can use this, I didn't hear that. No. It hasn't come up yet. I'm there to say uh, and, and I I'm sorry. I understand this is not an operate. This isn't the, Max. the how yeah. we'll operate the facility. That's not what you know. I'm raising showing here. I'm the location, you know, and in choosing yeah, the location, right. I had to look yeah. at site work, and landscaping, and site everything that would go into it. Basically, this was uh, yeah. the focus for this was choosing the location that we felt best suited our needs. Secondly, uh, provided kind of framework. Um, to get started with the project, not <coughs> building, but fundraising. And then if the board says, yes, we'd like to, uh, not only, yes, we're encouraged and we'd like to do this, a proposal is there to do so uh, with a motion, then we'll start to develop with, with some of the community groups the actual um, manual, how we're going to use it, the guidelines, you know, do we register to the dogs, all those type of things will then be the next course of action. I realize this isn't an operations plan, but at 50,000 feet, two questions. Which department within our organization is this going to be managed by? <coughs> who's, who's going to have to, who's going to do that? Uh, it, it, I haven't decided that yet. Okay, it's Rec and so. Park. It's probably going to fall under Rec and Park. Okay. And what about the insurance issue? We'll just add, I don't have insurance yet. Okay. I mean, I haven't. So I mean, other. We'll, we'll have. Uh, other it'll be covered. We'll, 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 we'll get. 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 We'll could be, you know. So there are going to be, I mean, there will be operational costs. Yeah, there will be. Sure, yeah, sure. The, the motion actually, uh, at least in the discussion part of it, uses information that Bob has provided to me, and he's estimated it's in the one to two thousand dollar operational cost range. That's the last sentence, I believe, of the uh, motion under the discussion uh, paragraph. Bob, right. does that cover everything you have? Yes, sir. Okay, so you're going to put your motion to play now? Yes. So that concludes the general manager's portion of. On the, dog report on the dog park. Okay. So now we're back to the yes, motion. Sir. Okay. Um, you have had distributed to you, uh, as part of your board packet, a motion that I have regarding the dog park, and I'd like to put it forward at this at this time. Uh, I move that the board commit to build a dog park within Ocean Pines for the benefit of association members, provided that a the board approves the location of the dog park. B the cost to build the dog park does not exceed twenty five thousand. C, the voluntary contributions are received from the general public through fundraising efforts of supporters of the dog park and not by the association in an amount equal to at least 50% of the building cost or a minimum of $12,500. D, that any related construction contract be approved by the board if association policy requires such approval. In excess of 15,000 requires such approval. And E, that volunteers assume the responsibility for maintaining and monitoring activity at the site. Uh, as you see from the background discussion, uh, and Bob and I have worked together on this, and the numbers are coming from Bob and consistent with what you see up there. Um, and I mentioned a moment ago that the last paragraph in the, under the discussion, Bob's best estimate at the moment is in the 1,000 to 2,000 range, but that is predicated on volunteers assuming some responsibility here for policing. We don't have to have you know, paid staff up there to monitor this thing. Uh, so we um, can control that. So, uh, and I've been assured uh, by, by Jack Levering that uh, you know, they'll act responsibly and take some responsibility for controlling that activity, right? Absolutely. So, um, some have asked why the, uh, at least 50%, as I've said, if, uh, if the fundraising effort is very successful and raises 80%, I think that's a great thing. Or 100%, I think that's even better. Uh, but at a minimum 50%, and I did put in here 12.5 uh, at a minimum, that was based on the 25, rather than get into, well, it was $24,307, and let's compute 50% of that and give a refund of $12 to so-and-so. Do I have a second on the motion? So. Okay. Oh, can I second? Yeah, I'll yeah. second that sucker. Okay. Any other any yep. discussion? Yes. <laughs> I hate it. But, uh, I'd like to amend it, uh, offer an amendment. 
and basically it would add a F to the list of things that you've got there and the F would be and by the way I believe this is going to be done but I'd like to see it in, in, sure. in a motion the general manager advised by a knowledgeable group of uh, dog park proponents uh, develop a concept of operations which will ensure the safety and well-being of the animals dog owners and uh, and members general membership basically a concept of ops yeah. is, is required you're proposing that as an amendment and I'm proposing yeah that you add that to and make it an F under the list of I'm very supportive of that and I would have yeah. a second that uh, amendment okay but well, we've got to vote on the amendment <laughs> yeah, no, okay. yeah. You accept the, the amendment. The amendment. No, okay. I accept it, but I agree. Yeah. All right, on the amendment, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Both? None? On the motion, all those in favor? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we do get a little discussion. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> nice try, Tom. I have a history of very long meetings. I'm trying to recover. But you don't hold very many special meetings, so no, I mean, I don't. you know, no, I don't. That's I'll true. forgive you. Uh, I have some concerns. Number one, I don't think it's fully flushed out. Okay, I, I appreciate the homework Bob has done with the location, etc. But there are issues that have not yet been, in my mind, totally resolved. Who is going to be using this? Is it strictly Ocean Pines Association members? Is it open to the public? I mean, those have not been addressed. If it's open to the public, how are we going to control it? And if it is open to the public, why haven't we finally gone to the county and ask them for money to support this. Now they may come back and say, no, we're not gonna support it, and that's fine. That, that's, you know, that's, that's up to them. But at least we've done and asked for money. In addition to that, we're talking about, and some people would argue what's $12,500 is not a significant amount of money. However, Bob has added a couple of things I think is extremely important when you talk about dogs and that's watering stations, 90 degree heat. I mean, think about it. Uh, I certainly wouldn't want my dog running around there in 90 degree heat without water stations, and I'm assuming you need two, one for each side. So that's an additional $7,000 added on to the $12,500, uh, which would bring it up to almost $20,000, which is above your figure of 25 grand. There's no policy set out, you, you talk about you're going to get a group together, but what happens after you leave, who's going to take it over? And what is that group going to be responsible for? You know, uh, I, I don't see any of that. And from where I sit, I would like to see those before we go ahead and approve this, because it's a long-term additional amenity in this cost associated with it. Let me ask for some clarification in that. Pete, in your motion as you wrote it, yes. it says, I move that the board commit to build a dog park provided that A, B, C, D, E, and now F, F right. happen. Right. That implies to me that Bob has to come back to the board of directors to prove that A, B, C, D, E, and F have been done okay. in order for us to finally say go. Okay. I, I, so the, please clarify. Yeah, what I, I'll the clarify from my own vantage point. Mind. The answer is yes. And, and John, to John's comment, I think Dave, by adding E, as I believe F. asking for an operational yeah. plan to be developed is also one of the contingencies that we're asking to be satisfied before it's I, I, I could write a page and I'm sure the you know I'm a, then least, I'd have the plan <laughs> I mean it's a, you know I, I under the concept of operations that's the kind of thing exactly that I think has to be spelled. That's why I put it in. Well, I, I understand that, but we're now asking a group to go out and start raising money. Yes. Absolutely. And we're asking them to raise money, and we may or may not agree with what they're putting together, with the concept of operations, etc. Who's I, they? I mean, I'm sorry. The board. Right. Go ahead. Get your hand um, This has come up many times over the years when we're going to decide who's going to use the, uh, <coughs> the skate park. The registered there are out people come from outside to use a skate park we don't have a clue how many folks come from all over the place to use all of our parks to use the amenities or anything else we as long as long as there's no gates <coughs> restricting movement in and out of here we cannot say this is going to be exclusive to ocean pines because we have no way of controlling that 
There's not going to be somebody sitting there to do it. So there is a possibility and there's probability that it will be used just like all of our other facilities are for people who are not residents of Ocean Pines. And we have to recognize that before we worry about restrictions on how it's going to be done. State law says you're con you're con that overrides everything. You're to control your dog and you're to clean up after it. And that's whether it's on the street, the side of the road, or at a dog park. So <clears throat> when we're looking at the size of this place, what the square footage is going to be, and what the total co overall cost of the land is used for, of course the land right now is just used for, it's there with trees and grass if somebody walks, walks through. It's a wooded area that's actually there right now. So it's intrinsic value in that particular section, I don't th I think it's kind of moot. But the, the point that I want to make is we have no way of really controlling who's going to use it, and other outside people will be using it. If, if I may comment on that, I have seen signs in the pines that state <coughs> this is strictly for the use of ocean pines and their guests. Oh, that's right. Okay. Boat ramp. Not only the boat ramp, the basketball courts, I think, right out here. Okay. Uh, you can't control. And I think, if I remember talking to dog owners, they said there was going to be controls. I just haven't seen them. And, I, I, and again, your $25,000 is, is, is too low based upon uh, the possibility and, and likelihood that we're going to start adding things to this. And, uh, you know. Um, As I read the motion, and that's why I went back to Pete, you wrote it and you put it forward, the, the impact of this motion, as I understand it, is to basically put in place a list of things that have to be done, and if they are done, then we will, by, by fiat, come back and agree to the final well, agreement. Uh, I mean, I'm just uh, trying to understand yeah, the Let impact. me tell you what, um, what I am asking by this motion for this board to do is to approve us proceeding to construct a dog park. That's what it says. Period. <laughs> now, we also add a couple condition you have provided that but it doesn't say explore it and come back to us okay. that we, we have explored yeah. we've been at what we need here is action on the part of the board so that Jack and others can go about the business of raising the funds with the assurance that we're not going to change our mind right that's a very important part of my dad point of order uh, you want to no. recognize the gentleman or not Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, you can do that. I know. Yeah, okay, well, okay. I'll just I get there. <laughs> but that, you're asking me what I meant by this. Yeah, I'm, I'm I meant for us to commit to do the damn thing. Okay? I understand <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I fully understand that, and, 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 and that's okay. I just don't think we're ready to commit. Okay. Yeah. That's my challenge. Dave, um, well, let's, let's, you he hasn't yeah. said anything. I just want to throw in a comment. I, I have made the comment at a meeting before that I don't have a dog and I don't know anything about dog parks. Um, that's changed somewhat because I've done a little study on that. Um, I still don't have a dog at the moment. Um, we but can um, help. Hmm? We can help out with that. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. But um, Obviously, it is a growing thing in this country. Uh, there are several in our area. Uh, people that use them are pretty passionate about how successful they are. Um, and the people that are here, um, Mr. Levering and, and others that are, are really into it, have, have pretty much convinced me that it is a very worthwhile thing. Um, how it's going to work, um, I'm, I don't know all the details. This gives us the opportunity to explore those details, uh, a set of procedures, whatever it takes. Uh, and, and I think it's something really now that's worthwhile committing on. Dave? Yeah, um, well, I obviously, I obviously do too. I think it's an opportunity for a relatively small amount of money compared to other things, relatively. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not a trivial money at all, but to, to give Ocean Pines uh, something that it doesn't have before. I mean, and, and a good thing, which I, I but uh, the one problem I still have with this, you know, I guess I'm hung up on, uh, on that order. I mean, I would prefer at this point in time to, uh, I, I'm looking at this for some reasonable price to maybe $5,000 and put, and, and and bump up the not to exceed 
such that you would have the opportunity to put the uh, the watering uh, stations in there. There are two models. The one is about is under to 1800, and you need John says two of them, so that it cover within the you know say a five thousand dollar. I wouldn't also necessarily. Well, I don't know. I mean. Uh, whether or not the we would ask the dog owners, I don't know how they feel about that. In other words, are we going to make it still fifty percent? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, if you and I had sort of a little sidebar conversation earlier, and if we yeah. upped it to thirty thousand, I would up the uh, twelve five to fifteen. So it would end up costing us potentially another yeah, twenty five hundred hundred dollars. So I, a matter of fact, I will uh, offer that as an amendment to the. Uh, to the thing and the, and the amendment being yeah, the water. <coughs> Do I have a but second on the second, 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 second. How much are we increasing it by? In paragraph B, Dave, your uh, amendment would uh, raise that number to 30,000, right? Yes. And in C, raise it to 15,000? Yes. 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 And, and I second the motion to amend. Have we, in fact, covered all the potential costs? in this twenty five or thirty one thousand dollars. I mean we talked about a hose. You know. Well I, I, you know, but these are valid questions. If you start reading in the hist on the uh, Google all this stuff, you find out there are a lot of issues with dog parks. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know I, I'm not we sure have a ceiling in this motion of fifteen thousand dollars from the from the OPA. That's how this, as I read this, a ceiling. Absolutely. there's and a hopefully ceiling it'll be less 15 grand from us, and we left that alone. But I mean, then we're saying that we're buying the lesser of the two expensive ones. I'm, I'm not sure what, you know. I don't even know if $31,000 is enough. It's Are we pushing it too close? Should it be thirty five? Should it be forty? Yeah. I don't know the expenses. But, you know. We've capped it at 30000 here. Yeah. Um, and we're really capping Ocean Pines investment at fifteen. Fifteen. Now, I'm going to call the question on the amendment. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Call the no objection. I'm going to call the question on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you raised your hand and said aye. So when he asked, no. No. So when he said it, who opposed? And I said aye. <laughs> okay. I do. Oh, he did. I don't know. Really the letter I said A Y E. I think that's how you can talk. Okay. Approval of minutes. Back to I'll move approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. County Commissioner's report. Um, just a couple of highlights that I've picked up in here. Uh, the commissioners have recently received a positive response to their request that the vast majority of the Pines Plaza, which is just outside our community, uh, be designated a priority funding area, which I assume means they can get state funding easier. They also have passed a burn ban at this point. They're burning. Um, the steam housing development, it's a lot of praise in this document. It basically says it's, it's made it past its new uh, statement. It also references here the country club being selected as the voting location. Um, not exactly sure where we are on that. I have a question. On where that. are we on that, Bob? Um, I'm, I'm going to talk about the country club. Are you interested in the voting? Are you going to that? No, no, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to that then. Dave, okay. hey, okay Yeah, fine. All right. Uh, progress for gas, and uh, I do want to read the last paragraph of this because I think it's appropriate when someone has served us as well as they have. It has to do with Carrie Nelson. Uh, this is Judy Bond's report. Uh, she says she has recently learned of Ocean Pines, very capable director of public works, will be leaving in mid August to accept another position. I would like to use this opportunity to commend Carrie for his work. He has done in Ocean Vines and for his willingness to always work cooperatively with county staff on many critical issues affecting Ocean Pines. I always admired Kerry's work ethic and his total commitment to our community. I wish Kerry and his family well as they embark on this new endeavor. Uh, our loss is Virginia's gain. So it's appropriate that you yeah. Amen. include. Okay. 
That's the commissioner's report. And now we go back to the general manager's report. But you don't have to cover the dog park, because you know that's good. Let me find my finances. You got copies of this? I do. Together. Pass that on down. Give me one more on this side, and you go left. Okay. Go together. With the whole packet. Dave, you got one. Okay. All right. Uh, run through the monthly uh, report. Some real positives this month. I uh, just want to point out uh, all five pools, you know, were open as of Memorial Day. And um, and we had 2,038 visitors uh, participate in the pool during Memorial Day weekend. Uh, this is for June. I thought this was interesting. Again, we're trying to track uh, those the visits to the pools and everything. I mean, if we're going to manage the facilities, we need to track the usage. 15, over 15,000 visits to the pools. That's a pretty phenomenal number. I mean, when you're trying to figure out how we're managing the resources, you know, knowing how, how patrons are using it, I think are critical. So uh, I just like to point that out as an update. Interestingly enough, we talked about sports court pool uh, because this one comes has come up a whole lot about our expenses. And I would have thought uh, as the summer months and the other pools opened up that we would have you you know less usage you can see how our use has increased and leveled off um, April May sort of leveled we have an increase in the in the covered pool use as well in June I just thought they were, were phenomenal numbers and you know I think uh, Tom Perry our aquatics director and his team are doing a very very good job there and uh, in addition to that uh, I, I just wanted to point out, I mean, we're using our facilities. I mean, we're certainly maxing out uh, the use of this particular facility. Uh, so as we go through this summer and we're tracking the usage, what we want to do is then, you know, we're trying to track the expenses associated with that usage so if we can see if we can come up with some ways to reduce the overall cost. Mr. Steve? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I've been missing something for the last months, but, uh, you know, I see that these numbers might be good to collect and might be of interest, say, next year um, or the year in following years, uh, given that we don't have anything at all to compare them with uh, from last year. I mean, I don't know. It, it's, it's interesting. We had a total of 4,000, but I don't know. How interesting is it? <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, I mean, we're, I mean, do we always have, it doesn't surprise me that the sports core, you know, because when we covered it, you know, I guess it's nice to know that we didn't turn people away, but it was always my understanding from way, way back that the sports core was by far the most popular pool we had. If, if I may, Dave, yeah. uh, as the liaison for the Aquatics Committee, uh, these numbers are in fact very significant because when I took over that, uh, established that committee, I started using the indoor pool. And if you notice in the winter time, et cetera, et cetera, uh, I can tell you that I swam there considerably at the time uh, only because I wanted to see the usage and there wasn't any. Literally, I had the pool to myself with two or three guides. You know, I felt very secure. <laughs> uh, as a result, as uh, Tom said, as high, separating this out from the uh, uh, parks and recs, uh, the usage of the indoor pool has gone up significantly as a result of many new programs being put in there. Not only the current programs you have, but they started with an early morning swim team, the master's team, 
things that were never used before. The pool was there, but they did not fully utilize it for teaching scuba diving, for teaching uh, kayak safety, uh, uh, our own uh, Red Cross safety classes. They have done a lot more in there. So these numbers are in fact important because they show that more and more people. In addition to that, people are finding out that the indoor pool, especially if you're very concerned about melanoma, people are going there now because it's a protection for melanoma. They go inside and they're covered from the sun, etc. cetera. So, uh, yeah, you don't have anything in the past to cover other than the fact that you always heard people say it wasn't used. Uh, and like I said, when I went there, it really wasn't used. Uh, and in uh, today it is. Well, I think you, that's the key. What, what you're saying is that the indoor pool, the indoorness of the indoor pool, which is say mainly it's winter months and summer too as it comes along, is uh, the usage is increasing from back when. I that's mean, right. sort of a chart that would say, hey, look, yes. look what's happening like this. Yes. But that's not exactly, you know, well. Because what, they're offering what, what, more what programs. That, I mean, that's, that's information yeah. that's, that's, that's they're useful. They're offering okay. more programs. There was, if you go back further in history, you'll say there was a big dip in the sports core right. because we covered yeah. the pool. That's <laughs> I mean, right. That, that and, happened. And, and what happened was this, and now it's going back up because they are now right. realizing there are many things you can use that pool for year-round. Well, and that is what it's happening. I guess I'm just suggesting that perhaps, you know, those that's interesting information and there may be better way to present it, but that's okay. This is the time. We'll be right along, Robert. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's interesting for twofold, just so everyone's clear on my perspective. We've never tracked the numbers before. We are now. So, yes, it would be great to go back a year or two or three and see what daily use, weekly use, monthly use was. We don't have it. We're now tracking it. Um, so, uh, and the reason I highlight this particular pool each and every month is this happens to be the one that draws the no most fire year after year because of the fact it's covered and the expense that goes with it. So I am tracking it very, very, uh, we're very focused on this for a reason. That's why I include it. It's just to give you guys an update. If you, if you, if you guys don't want to see it month over month, that's one slide I don't have to create. I thought it was of interest to you. As far as I'm concerned, Bob, I think you ought to keep reporting this for nothing else. It creates a benchmark as to what the interim starting point is. You can argue over how many people were there or not there. The reality is this is now a measurement going forward. And with all the conversations that I've had with various people trying to schedule things at this locale, I can guarantee you that the, the in use of this facility has increased constantly since you arrived in the chair you're in uh, because people are now driving Tom Perry crazy trying to schedule everything they want to do. So we clearly have an increased use of this facility. This is one way of tracking it. Another way of doing it would have been showing all the programs we've got going on there. So I just think that's, I think it's good to do. Tactfully, yes, there is not a zero number <clears throat> of how many people used it in June and you know, in 19 or 2010. Yeah, there is no number for us to look at. Go ahead. John? Um, well, uh, Bob, you might, how does it translate as far as new membership for, for dollars? With all the extra stuff coming in, uh, I, I is there any way to really it. look at it? Yeah, well, I, I, I don't have it with me right now. Okay. I can give you membership numbers uh, and, and dollar numbers, sure. And our month, and understand when we get to the numbers at the end, where I give each month the monthly number, you know, where we stand, I always pulls one of them, okay. or it's under aquatics. Ray brought it up, but, but don't we, uh, I haven't seen it this month, maybe a membership report? Have we stopped getting those? or? We're not doing them weekly, and that's what was happening in the past, we're not generating them monthly. Okay. Yeah. I guess I haven't seen this one. Or is, is it in the packet? I think it's, uh, in, the it's packet. in the packet. It's uh, in the packet. Okay. It's in the packet. Membership report for the period under July 15th, actually. It's in the packet. Here you go. It's in the packet. Go ahead, Bob. Okay. Any other side? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah, hey, other side. Let's put them in. It may, have been had had it may have been in your box separately, by the way. I just had an editorial comment. Um, yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> um, I think these kind of reports are separate. valuable. I can get it from my belt. 
Um, because from a little bit different perspective, um, a lot of people, including myself, were very, very unhappy with how the sports core pool got to be there. But the fact is, it is there, and it's a really nice facility. I don't think that's published very much, uh, and I think these kind of reports bring that out. More and more people are seeing that. Um, you can be angry with it in the past, but it's really a nice place, mm -hmm. a good facility to use. We don't get enough positive publicity. Uh, everybody's willing to jump all over things they think is wrong, but this is something that's pretty positive. That's all. Thank you. I agree. I think we ought to keep seeing the numbers. I'd like to see them. Uh, pool fence at the Yacht Club. Mm. Hot topic. I thought, you know what? I heard word about it. this one. Yeah. Yeah. Could you skip over this? <laughs> I could, but I, I figured I'd just hit it real quick. Um, A lot of energy created around the defense removal, potential removal of the, the yacht club uh, pool. The fencing that separates from the yacht club building to the pool area. Uh, we have, have, with board's uh, approval, been proceeding down the path to make that happen. Uh, we did finally receive our, our permit uh, saying yes, we could do so. Uh, we do have a lighting plan that we need to follow in, in doing that. We ended up getting that permit several weeks after our anticipated receipt date, uh, which puts us into the July time frame. Well, to install the lighting that's required, we can't drive, uh, we had two light poles replaced out here and they're similar lights. Uh, they had to use the backhoe to boot, they're heavy, heavy lights, to pick it up, swing it, and set it. Uh, with lighting at the pool, what we would have to do is rent a, a, a piece of equipment, a uh, boom, uh, a crane basically with a boom on it, to lift those lights over the fence, bring them down and set them down in the locations where they're required to be. Uh, it was our intent to do that at the same time we're removing the fence. Well, obviously you all know the challenge that creates. We have extended pool hours. That would have to be during, during uh, that, that work would have to be completed during daylight hours uh, for safety purposes which means I would then have to uh, take the pool out of circulation or close certain hours to make that occur while we're putting the lights in. The fencing is something we can do very quickly. That could be something done you know, at right immediately after we close and very, very early in the morning. But setting these lights would take a little more time and energy. And quite frankly, mid-season, I don't think that's the appropriate way to go right now. In addition to that, uh, I had some really, really great feedback at the town hall meeting from, from some folks about other options when we do remove the fence, how we should remove it, um, just some other things to consider. So with the combination of those two things, and the primary focus for me is just I don't want to take the pool out of commission for even a day right now. Uh, Mid-season, we don't have a wide, you know, we've got a three or four month window there when we're actually using all five pools. Even losing a day or two is just not a good situation. So uh, what my intent to do is delay the work on the pool fencing at least until after, uh, sometime in the fall and maybe as late as early spring, but to have it done prior to uh, our season opener in May next year. And the primary reason why I don't need to upset the apple cart over there from a, um, a business standpoint. I mean, we're busy. You can see the pool usage overall is up. I don't think taking that down right now is uh, is the smart business move. So what I, I intend to do is delay the project at least until after this season. Good. Maybe a, a little bit off that subject. Um, we talked in the spring about extending pool hours and we have done that except at the Yacht Club pool. We have not. It's, what, why not? Lighting. I have to put the lights in. After a certain... Uh, there's a certain certain lighting requirement, okay, that, that's, um, the, and we ha you have to be able to see the bottom of the pool <coughs> in its entirety at a certain light level. Hence, that's why these particular lights had to be put in to do so. That's so part of the permit, actually. Part, yes. So, so uh, it's a good question, but that's why I couldn't extend those hours until I get the lighting in. Didn't want to put the lighting in until I get the fence situation taken care of. So there's a process. We're up to that point. 
I could pull the trigger, put the lights in, do the fence. But the disruption of business activities there, I think, don't warrant doing it. There's, the juice isn't worth the squeeze right now. I think for next season, this will be a project. We'll have it done. But uh, the lighting is important, and that would have given us some extended hours there. Without the lighting, we can't do the extended hours we're looking for at that facility. Okay. What time is it closed now? Seven. Not seven. Seven. We want to extend it till nine. Oh, right. But when you get okay. that seven yeah, to nine yeah, dust yeah, yeah. area creates the, the issue for us. I don't know how many people there are, but there are there are people who we're looking forward to that later in the hour. So. Yeah, well, it will start actually closing earlier as the dust gets closer. It's it's tied to the dust line. Right. Okay, as you said, it's purely a safety issue. Yeah. Dave? I can understand why people at the, uh, the aqua pool will be looking forward to a later hour. I mean, it's an adult pool, or at least it was an adult pool. But... Um, it is. It is. Yeah, for now. Uh, whether it's an adult pool after the fence is removed is, is, is another issue. Not really. But, but, well, you say not really. Okay. I mean, all, will there or will there not be kids in the pool area during the... Yes, there will be. I think that's what John... This question. But the other question I have regarding hours and other pools, I've been told, and this is purely anecdotal, although it's by somebody who's there every day, uh, that things like the Swoon Racket Club pool, after and up to and around 8 o'clock and after that, there's nobody there. It's empty. Um, is that, you know, have you monitored that? Is that true? Or, uh, I mean, again, I'm just, it's one source. That particular pool does tend to um, slow down its activities in the late, in the early evening hours. Yes. Yeah, she was talking about zero, but I don't know. So it's after eight p.m., it's pretty slow. After eight p.m., yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you you know we do the uh, Ocean Pine swim team does have their meets there in the evenings. Not every night, but I mean it, it is utilized. It's just not yeah. utilized every evening, and we do have lights and. Well, I'm just wondering. I mean, you have to get the experience, of course, and whether, you know, I mean, are we going to maybe at some point <laughs> adjust the open for business, you know, to exclude open for business when there's no business, you know, kind of thing. I mean, there is, I mean, can't the, you know, swim team comes, yep, you got to have it covered. I, if your question is, am I adjusting the management strategy for this season for the pools, I am not open for business as a strategy. I intend to employ for the entire year and then make the adjustment after the season. Uh, and several, I mean, we'll evaluate what we did, how it worked, uh, you know, did, the, did we get the optimum results or not, but adjusting mid-season uh, unless it's something. I wouldn't great. expect you to, Bob, actually, but, um, but the real question would be, are we doing enough to collect the metrics which, which would allow us, you know, allow you to make the recommendation uh, next season. I mean, okay. if you, you have to, I mean, like, you're just monitoring the pool. Well, the last slide I yeah. showed, showed the number of usage and you didn't like those, so I am tracking it. Well, I, I mean, I, I, have to show that. I only, I only pointed out that, you know, it's a metric, uh, but as as far as the metric being used to translate that into information, it's not particularly useful. What is particularly useful is, you know, a, an occasional monitor, or asking your staff, are we getting anybody in here after 8 o'clock, or could we close it, uh, close it at 8? No, I think you made your point that we're open for business this season, through the season. Well, that's the <coughs> answer. Well, that right. it. And with your managers who are on site, they got eyeballs on it. Yeah. Uh, now the appropriate uh, adjustments can be made. A step further that, that I hope helps um, also answer the question, we're using the swipe card, <coughs> excuse me, swipe cards. Uh, so we are gathering data, you know, every time. So you'll know the time. So you'll be able to go yeah, back and say. Uh, Correct. Um, when somebody okay. went in. Correct. When so we can track usage. We can. I mean, that was one of the big, um, you know, points to make sure they were up and operational effectively this year so we can track that. Uh, very definitively so we can make better decisions, you know, potentially for next season. Yeah, so you could, okay. All yeah. right. That's what I'm, that was my question. Okay. Good. Okay. Town Hall. Yes, sir. The one question I had, when you do move the fence, mm -hmm. how are you going to handle the uh, eating facilities, the deck, on the deck? Are children going to be allowed to eat there? Uh, the intent, and it's it's been this way from the beginning, and, I, and, and I'll, I'll restate it, 
that side of the facility is, is for adult members, to the pool area, obviously, and right next to it's a bar. It was my intent to make that side of the facility an adult area. To include the tables where people yes, are currently, so that whole area, children will not be allowed in that area. That was the intent, yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, is that, do we need a legal position on that there? Are we restricting, uh, because it has been open to children, okay? Are we, in fact, restricting members of the association from bringing their children to that area to sit down? Let's face it, it's a beautiful area to sit. You get the view, yeah. the, et cetera, et cetera. I just, you know, that's the question that was posed to me, Bob. Well, and we're, for mm -hmm. we're restricting use of that area, three quarters of it, anyway. Okay. And then, and when you move the remove the fence, you're opening the bar area. Yes, there is seating there. I got it. But uh, the intent was to stay with the the core focus in an adult facility yeah, okay. on that side. Okay, so that whole section will, is going to become an adult section if it's enclosed by the fence mm -hmm. where the table. No, it is not. Not where the bar is. Oh, not where the bar is. Where, where the bar is, but and then the you fence. have the t then you have the yeah. tables right okay. along the yacht club yeah. Yeah. itself. That is open to all members of the association. As is the lower deck. As is the lower deck. So when we close it in. We are now making that section of the eating facility strictly adult, as I hear what you're saying. That is correct. If that's that correct, yeah, if that's correct that's you answer. take away my concern. I, that, yeah. That's exactly yeah. the question I was posing. Okay. Yeah, I don't have. A, you, so we we are not changing something that we're, an adult only that we've had for 40 well, years. I, I, I have heard the answers or people tell me, well, well, no, the. Uh, the kids won't be allowed in the pool, but they'll be allowed to learn. <laughs> and so what? You know what I mean? Well, what you're changing, yeah. Dave, is what once used to be opened up to all members of the association, yeah. all family members, etc. We are now making it a restricted area for adults and adults only. Yeah. Although okay. I have to There's say, a bar right there. In general, in general, I'm not saying I've never seen a kid out there, but typically no, okay. it's family fun night that, and we yeah. have one of those. Okay. Yeah, okay, I understand. Uh, fa family fun night is the exception that's, to no, the rule. No, no, I, I wasn't the referring exception to, to the rule, yeah, that's yeah. I wasn't referring to family fun night. I've been so there So that alleviates the questions that you've heard, and Dave, the concerns and... I'm well, it, it, it does, of course. It you you sort of got to enforce it a little, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that, uh, you gotta, you it, it's an adult's only area. It's an adult's only yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Town hall meeting, and Teresa liked the, uh, the thing. I had a lot of people say, are you crazy having a town hall meeting? Um, and, and what was interesting, we had approximately 125 residents attend. Uh, we received 17 emails with questions in advance of the town hall meeting, which we were, were pleased with. Helped us develop some of the answers, you know, some of the presentation prior to opening to the, you know, question Q&A uh, during the meeting. 17 folks watched it live on the web. First time we had tried that, and we actually had folks log in, and we had 17 um, people that weren't able to come live and watch it, or in, in person were able to watch it over the web. Uh, 92 uh, clicks on the video uh, once it got up to, you know, for viewing. We've had 92 folks uh, click to review it. And then since then, we've had 650 hits since last week on the video. Uh, from our home page. How many? 650. Okay. Now, does that mean that 650 yeah. people watch an hour and a half meeting? No, I'm not naive enough to say that. Uh, but what I do think is interesting is, is providing the video, providing the live feed is a way to communicate with our residents and, and by the between the emails coming in prior to and then the, the feedback we've, we've gotten so far, uh, we've had a lot of positive feedback from folks either coming in, sending us an email, or just calling in saying thanks, it was great to be able to interact and, and you know, talk in an open session like that. So overall, uh, we were very, very pleased. Um, as a matter of fact, anyone that came to the meeting saw that we had about 85 chairs set up and we quickly had to readjust. Uh, we were pleased at the number that came and then obviously the feedback. So uh, we intend to do more of those. Dog park, I'm gonna go right by this. Silly Planning Group, I promised an up, up 
uh, update to everybody at the board meeting, so I wanted to give every, you, you folks an update on where we are. Uh, we're updating our vision statements on the on several uh, several of the campuses that were not included in the initial facility planning uh, information that I gave to you. Uh, we we sent out a request for proposal. That's the handout I just I gave you. Uh, it, it was in the newspaper. Uh, we did send it out um, to folks that were at, uh, our public works group has. When we do requests, uh, we send it out to get feedback. We had uh, uh, folks show up at the pre-bid meeting, and what and what we're basically looking for with the with the RFP. Uh, I've had some some folks call me and go, "Oh, well, we we want to bid on the building. We're not ready to bid on anything." <laughs> uh, what this was uh, was we wanted to get an independent evaluation of the facility, which is inclusive of a life cycle report. Here's the current condition. Here's, you know, we know the age of the facility. Um, you know, if we had the independent engineer come in and give us more detailed report, and we've done this in the past, I mean, and that was in some of the material I've given you already. Uh, again, when we're looking at taking steps to, to potentially uh, make significant recommendations for this facility, we thought, might as well get the most current updated information before we made that recommendation uh, in the life cycle report. Now, the reason that's going to be important for us, uh, we still haven't made the final decision of whether we're going to focus on a rehab or rebuild. Okay, rebuild would be tear down and, and start over. Rehab would be whatever extent the re, you know rehab could be, whether it's uh, you know gutting the inside and, and doing that, whether it's just uh, changing some of the mechanicals, but not all. But that's where the life cycle report will come in. You know, it'll take the age of, of the different, the HVAC, the plumbing, uh, the electrical, and give us a useful life. And then we can make a, 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 we hope, a very informed decision of which of the two paths to be on. Uh, validating usage. Uh, we've been uh, looking at, as we spoke before, uh, with all the past reports. Back up a sec. Yes, sir. The RFP meeting, <coughs> how many people were there? I don't have that. Uh, I can get you Roughly. the information. Well, well, 14, we're 14, 2 or 3, 14. Okay. Okay. We had a lot show. Okay. Okay. Right. So we have people bidding on this that have not necessarily looked at our buildings before, and some that have, and we have a mixture. We have a mix. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is it true to say, I think it is, that uh, no study like this, of course, the, the, uh, the country club has been modified several times and uh, um, I know we have <laughs> some of the information going back to that time because I've looked at it myself. Um, I cannot recall any previous engineering studies on the country club. There is, the, there's one, um, and I apologize for not having it right here with me, it's 02 or 04, we had the uh, DAL The DAL, yeah. I'm Accepting the DAL, which which did in fact uh, look at the country club, as, it did, uh, but as it did with all the uh, major mm -hmm. facilities, and then there was also uh, some some good information in the ECW report as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a I don't recall the date on that, but they were both in the the facility uh, planning group uh, booklets that I handed out. They were part of the um, reports, in addition, ten year task force. Yeah. And, so it's in there. Those two are actually pretty good um, indicators of where we were. Uh, and um, it would not surprise me if one of those two companies did uh, submit, uh, you know, for a proposal to, re to do the work. No, I just, in my view of this, I'm very glad to see that you're reaching out beyond the committee and beyond our own internal staff folks to get an independent view from professionals that do this. We have good people on committees volunteering, good solid time for us in the community, but I think this is worth us spending the money. I think that's the right direction as far as I'm concerned. Anyway. If, if I may, uh, we're asking him to take a look at the country club and possibly either renovating it or rebuilding it. As a result of rebuilding it, are we asking them to provide 
just a proposal for making it a golf facility? It's not with the RFP, just for clarification. Uh, if you look on here, we're asking them to evaluate the condition of the facility. We're not asking them to bid or scope a proposed rebuild or, or rehab. I want to know the current condition. Okay. So you know what I mean? Yeah, it's a value. It's a good question, but it's this is to evaluate its current condition and give us a, a formal report on what the life cycle or what the life expectancy of the components of the facility are. The next step would be just that. Okay. This is uh, a fairly detailed and what I'd call intrusive study. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, you're going to get in the walls. I mean, you're going to have to, you know. To extend your cat. To the extent that, you can. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's always a limit on, uh, on sure. that, uh, but I'm just Same. stressing the level. Yeah, the, the Oct Club, you can't tear the wall, you know, so. Now the next, yeah. just so you all know, the, ne the next carrier, once we get this accomplished with the um, Country Club, then we will do a similar, we're, we're going through this process because we target this as, as our focal, but I also told you our focal point, but I also explained that the Yacht Club would be, you know, we'd be also doing the research on that. Did not put RFP out for both because it reasonably I want to go through this process, document it, make sure we're getting the results that we intended to, and if the process works as we expect it to, we will then, you know, fall time frame do a similar study on the Yacht Club life cycle facilities. Just again, I think it's a good process to use when we're evaluating, well, as opposed to. I, 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 I think it is, and I think it's been. Uh, however, you know, it's been used in the past, as you report, with the Dow Dow study and and uh, and a number of the others. And your predecessor, uh, you know, was very much in favor of doing the uh, same thing. However, there was significant pushback. Uh, from some members of the board and the community in, uh, in general against uh, spending the money uh, to, uh, I'm not going to paraphrase, but to get these, uh, these reports. And, um, you know, to a certain extent, uh, you can disagree or agree, but, but it, it, there's some validity to saying once you get the report, you know, does it really get you what you uh, what you need uh, to go. Also, if you look at the Yacht Club, taking the same approach on that, I mean, basically, the Yacht Club got to the point where that work was done. Now, it wasn't done by taking a single engineering contractor, as you well know. It was done on a component level basis, major component level uh, basis. So you talked about the, uh, the pilings, the flooring structure, the decks particularly. Um, and, uh, and a number of other things, in each case, individual studies uh, having been done and then put together in one big conclusion, uh, which led directly to going out with an RFP. So you've still got the step of here of, you know, you get this engineering and it's just the beginning, really, of, uh, of the thing. Unless, of course, you've already made some assumptions about what you're going to do with it. I'm, I'm going to go a step further. I'll, I'll help clarify that as well. Validating usage is, is part of uh, what we're looking at. And I didn't mean to cut you off. I think I'm, no, that's gonna, fine. I that's think fine. I'm going to answer that question. No, I think, you know, yeah. Uh, in addition to getting the facility, you know, a, a, a snapshot of where we are right now with the facility from an outside engineer, we've, we're also valid, validating usage of that current facility. Uh, we, we've spoken to um, Billy Casper Golf. Uh, we, we had a great meeting with them to discuss uh, not only current, you know, how they, they, they intend to, you know, we're seeing them use the facility now, but what potential could be, what are the trends in the golf industry as they see it. Again, they may not be the, the end-all experts, but they're certainly a business partner with us, and I intend to use their resources. They, you know, when they're managing, you know, over 120 golf courses, uh, they're, that's their business. They're tracking the trends, and they're giving us some, they've given us some very, very good feedback on things to consider with the facility, you know, from a golf perspective. Uh, also uh, talked with them and and we're looking at what we've done in the past from from catering uh, to include we've had some as most of you know 
we have some really, really good reports that address this that have previously been done. Again, we're not trying to recreate the wheel. We're trying to, to really build a solid foundation for what our next steps forward are, and we can base that off a lot of hard work that other people have put into it. Um, so there, the, we're we're concurrently working down that process. It, it, okay. Everything I and I've only not been involved with any of these committees. Nor is anybody else. Understood. That's right. And we're talking about catering possibilities. Is that not? If we put a catering facility in there, even if it's for eighty so whatever, are we not competing against the yacht club? I don't think we are, and, it, and I was. Um, let me go on with the the use. I think catering should be considered in the facility. Here's okay. So then, what we're really saying is we're not even addressing the issue of whether or not we just need a golf club facility. Well, let me all right. Let me finish my thought, and I think I'm going to answer the question. Uh, that when we're validating the usage of the facility, uh, I believe, and that's part of what I've, I've asked the group help me come to the conclusion. Uh, it. I believe that that facility, the primary and best use is golf and how we serve those needs. Uh, there's a report uh, in, that was given to you folks um, that is inclusive of how we potentially could be using the facility. And the recommendation is a, uh, for an 80 uh, seat dining mm -hmm. facility. I can tell you uh, we're looking at, and it's my intent to bring you uh, a strong recommendation, uh, to be between 144 and 160. With the primary focus, I, I think the 80 was on target, but I think it limits us. That facility is a golf facility. That should be the primary intended use. Uh, you all know I'm not a golfer, but if that's gonna be the highest and best use of that facility, we need to start looking at uh, how we're gonna function from a golf perspective, and outings are inclusive in that. We've had some very, very successful, and those that have attended them and been there, Recently with, with Billy Casper, uh, Calvin B. Taylor uh, had a, a, a recent event. Uh, many golf outings include a, a dining element to it. Uh, to do that, you need 144 at, at, its, at its capacity. Uh, with a shotgun start, you want optimally to seat 144 people to facilitate a full golf outing. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. John, some groups will not come to a facility unless it can be accommodated in the numbers that they require for either a meal uh, after the event or before the event and so forth. So we are now limited in capacity, therefore it limits to some extent what we can attract. Obviously you've got to deliver the product, a good golf experience, good F and B, but we're getting positive feedback for that, but we have to take into account uh, that there's real profit potential and opportunity here to satisfy that and attract and not only earn the, the revenues and the uh, profits associated with the food and beverage, but from the additional golf that it might attract by virtue of having a, a nice F and B experience. I don't think we're in a situation here at but this point where we're going to debate no. what the results right, 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 right. ought to be. But the question was asked. Just to stay, and I understand the question, and, and I'm all for it's fine. You know me, I'll let discussions happen. How, 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 however, you know, we've talked about 80, and now I have a figure of 140. 144 you to know, 160 yeah. is what my target is. I mean, uh, two over the years we've constantly heard that we, the, the association itself cannot support two dining facilities. Uh, we are now going to put, because this is run by CASPA, they're not only going to be seeking uh, catering events for uh, just golf. I would imagine that being the business folks that they are, they're going to go out and try and, and definitely compete against what we have. Uh, when we talked about this contract <laughs> way back when, uh, when we did this with Casper, we made the comment, I know I made the comment that when we were allowing food in there, we were opening this up so that they would end up eventually being competing against the Yacht Club. What is to prevent them from using this facility and turning it into another dining facility such as we have at the Yacht Club? There will be. There will be. Let, let me address the compete so that everybody understands. We're competing against ourselves. So if they are successful, they're not competing against us and they're making money and we're not. No. It's our no, money. No, 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 no. There's a couple of things yeah. that do. No, it's our money. No, it's over capacity. 
It's okay. over capacity. Okay. It, I, I don't want to. I, I, I don't want to belabor the point. Point, point. My only matter. point. And it's too early. To point of order. About this, yeah. we're way too early yeah. here, John. I'll let you finish your point, but we need to move on to the rest okay. of the meeting. Right. And yeah. I think the issues are legitimate that I'm hearing. You know, we've had some discussion. Bob, you're aware of these issues and the questions. They're legit. Yeah. But we're not going to solve them here today. No, but I, no, no, I want to clarify I, something. Go right ahead. And John, you wrap it up and we're done with it. Go ahead. Okay. What you're saying, Bob, is that the report from the, the former uh, facilities task force um, that was accepted by the facilities task force and was later accepted or approved by the board through a motion. Correct. That you were in disagreement with that report and you were proceeding in another direction. I'm gathering all the, I'm not. No, you have oh, just no. told me that you. Would you like me to answer? Go ahead. Me answer for go me. ahead. <coughs> tell me, tell I'll me. I'd be happy to answer your question. Answer the question. I'm not going out of line on this one. I'm creating a recommendation to bring to the board for final action. That's what I'm tasked to do. I, I'm exploring all the options. I'm letting you know now because you and uh, Mr. McLaughlin asked me the question, what size catering? Yes, they are strongly being considered in support of a golf. Okay, so that is, that is the direction yes, that you're sir, going. That is the and, and just to be clear, it is in an actually opposite direction from what was approved by the last committee and what was approved by the board. No, sir, I yes, totally it is. disagree with you. hundred, as a matter of fact, the recommendation that was approved said that we need an all we need an alternate use we recommended that it not be a food and beverage uh, location of any size except to primarily uh, do golf we recommended that it not be a catering you operation you just not, said it. that it not be a catering location and that the very logistics of the area precluded having major events that were not directly related to golf Okay, you've made your point. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Okay, I gotta cut this off. Yeah, I'm going to. Uh, enough. Uh, we've had a lot of discussions. I don't here. like it when he gets the last word. Oh, well, I know. Oh, you can't oh, say it when anybody gets the last word. John, you want any, anything else? I, I just think we have to be careful as we constantly are changing horses in the middle of the swing. Yes. Yes. You say we're not. We, we, we are. And I, we are. To, and I don't always agree with Dave, but this is totally different than what we've talked in the past. And I understand, Bob, where you're coming from. As a GM, you're probably doing the right thing. Does. However, uh, we're putting this on the backs of our association members, and we have to be very careful when over the years we've had difficult times just making the Yacht Club successful. That's all. Fair enough. That's last not word. fair. Last what isn't fair? That's the I last. Speak, he, but he could. He had the last <laughs> word. He, I had the last word. He made it up front. <laughs> Way to go, John. I'll just Way say to go, John. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're no, not putting it in no, the back. No, we're trying no, to do no, it to make no, these no, things no, profitable, more no, profitable not so not we leave all. our members. That's yeah. what we're trying to do. You mean uh, that's what you would have said if you had the chance to say it? Yeah. Correct. Right. Thank you, Les. Okay. You're awesome. Glad and you I'm did. sorry I didn't have the chance I'm to say sorry it. Sorry I didn't have a chance to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> sir. Thank you. On to other uh, things. Ex sir. Excuse me. Before you <laughs> <start>. <laughs> right. Can I have yes, the final word here at the very close yes. as this is my last final meeting? Yes, no. So because he, of that, be, yes. So he yes. doesn't come in and try and usurp my yes, power? Yes, sir. You can't. <laughs> Is that your final word? That's my final word. There you go. Very okay. Much. Right. I agree with you, John. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On to the interesting, other interesting stuff. Damn. Money. Okay. Casino so money. We've been asked um, several times uh, in, in where we are with casino money. And I'll give you guys a, a very current, up-to-date. Uh, we have $112,395. Uh, it is in a BB. It is in a BB and T account. Uh, we're, we haven't done anything with the money except write the checks that go directly there. Now the next question is, what usage potential use for the money? And uh, you folks had asked me about that last month. What would I recommend as a potential use for the money? The concerns we have obviously are. Uh, would, whatever we use the monies for, uh, what does that do for us not only today and, and you know, how we're utilizing what's the benefit, but what does that potentially limit us to in the future? 
uh, it, the handout that you have that was uh, the second part of uh, the GM report is a, a little, it's an Excel spreadsheet, a little uh, hard to, to follow without a little bit of explanation on it. If you'll notice, uh, if you're looking at the spreadsheet, 2009 to 2010 is the first <coughs> column. We were, we, our, our 10 year roads plan, okay, was to accomplish half of the parkway. 2010 to 2011, the roads plan was to accomplish the other half of the parkway. Okay, everybody follow that? 11 and 12, was the next step in our 10-year roads plan. And you can see all of the sections and all of the roads, okay, to include mileage, of what was to be accomplished with resurfacing. And, and so on, if you, if you go down to 12 to 213, 213 to 214, uh, you can see there is a very detailed plan of what we were to accomplish with our roads uh, plan. Now, our funds are, as you know, are, are limited uh, to none of what we've, or I say very, very limited. We have received a little bit of money, but uh, very limited for our road research, uh, what we've used traditionally for road resurfacing. You ask me how I would use the money? Uh, I, it's supposed to be, uh, the parameters are some sort of infrastructure, greater good of all. I think roads are a good spot to consider, for the board to consider. Uh, using the money at least in the interim. And I say in the interim, there's a couple ways uh, that this can be managed. We're, we're putting this money into an account now, a savings account. Uh, picking that money up, and, and, and I will tell you when I, I, I spoke to uh, Mr. Gomsack about this, if we were going to utilize the money for roads, how do I prevent the county later looking at us and going, hey, you've already got your roads money you're using casino you don't need to get additional roads money in the future you know when the spigot comes back on uh, one of the things we discussed was creating a separate uh, infrastructure account it's like a reserve account uh, that we we transfer the money out of out of the bbmt account as it comes in into the infrastructure account and then we apply that into whatever the board elects as the infrastructure needs of the community may be at that time my recommendation is to get back on our roads plan uh, in the near future using the combination of the casino money and any additional monies we may receive from the county that are for the road, you know, anticipated for the roads plan, which is the gas tax pass through from the state to the county to us. So that's my recommendation. I didn't put a, a big proposal. I didn't go through again. You asked for what I would do with the money. This is what we've received. This is the plan. Uh, with the two years of uh, Parkway not having been addressed in the last two years, you know, I'd recommend we, we, we pick back up on our plan and we're going to have to assess, which would be potentially moving into the 11 and 12 section uh, with some potentially minor repairs on the Parkway. The Parkway is still in pretty good shape, but some of the side roads uh, have more, are having some more challenges in the quality of the road condition. So that's my recommendation. Can I comment on that? Sure. Yeah. Um, Bob, I think what we have is the, the, the monies go directly into a specifically a specific account just for these monies. So they're being totally segregated, and you've indicated that. Okay? Yes. We, by board resolution, have restricted the use of those funds for infrastructure purposes and to be determined later. So Bob can't do anything with them right now. So they're, they're, they're sort of they're locked up. If you will. My original motion back when uh, at the time my, many months ago was to restrict these funds to the roads because it seemed to me that, that was the most pressing need. We had a source of revenue that dried up temporarily. Dave Stevens wisely made an amendment to that motion to make it infrastructure restricted, which broadens it beyond roads. What Bob is referring to in a recent discussion he and I have had, and I certainly appreciate, we don't want to, it seems to me we don't want to dedicate, as you have suggested, it to roads and then somebody can later say, that let's work. Right. We're going to have needs from time to time that are infrastructure related that will cry out for the use of significant funding, right? What Bob, uh, I think, is suggesting is that his recommendation to us is that we get back on the resurfacing program by using some portion of this as maybe, maybe one year's funding, but leave all other options uh, open 
beyond right. that. So right. we're not saying we're going to use the casinos henceforth always for this or always for that, but as the needs arise, and this most pressing need would be the first one we address with some funding that we have available through the roads money. Right. So. And by the way, just so everybody knows this, but we've been getting, getting and spending about a half a million dollars a year. It is conceivable that we could have over the first year four to five hundred thousand dollars of casino money. Coincidence? Perhaps. Yeah, it's too much of a coincidence. Again, I, I, if I may, I, I same comment. Um, linking this money to, we're linking it to infrastructure, and um, and certainly roads are part of our infrastructure, and certainly that's a uh, a legitimate use. But again, I would make sure, and the general manager should recommend some specific other needs that we have that can be covered by even if we had uh, planned to budget them out of another source uh, prior. In other words, if the casinos can pay for them, casino money can pay for them, then we should use the casino money to, uh, to do that. In other words, you know, I'm very afraid that, that it will be pointed back, you know. Now, I'm not that afraid because, by the way, it's state money, and I don't yes. think they're watching us right now. <laughs> Is there anybody from the state? No. <laughs> and we're not the only county either. And we're not the only county, and the money comes county. from the state, and it comes into the county, and, county, and we have a formula with the county that's going to be going to be followed. So it's not like somebody can yank right. the money away from us or right. anything like that. But still, you know, real caution and... And just not just do a knee jerk, say roads are right. Even if we use it for roads, that's fine. But yeah, I'm not looking for any kind of vote today. I yeah. think what we wanted to put on the table, uh, there are legitimate concerns from the community as to how much money are we getting, are we even paying any attention to it, yeah. how might we be spending it. It is on the radar, as you can tell. Uh, Bob, I would ask that this road plan be updated. With because uh, you did state that you know maybe parts of the of the parkway are not you know this is like all north all south and then what's in 11 12 let's rework this plan just be cognizant uh, as board members and citizens that this amount of money coming in the door is not being ignored as something we might be able to use effectively and we want to make sure that we have a plan and continue to look at it and so this is something that we probably ought to have as a, at least for a few months, an ongoing discussion around this. That's what I would suggest we do. Let, let me quick on. This roads issue has been discussed about, what I'm talking about specifically is the deferral of our road resurfacing. This is not about potholes. This is where the major stuff where you're, you're really resurfacing the road is going to last you another 10, 12, 15 years. Uh, that's a big deal. And unless we start to address that, right. Um, we're going to be in a heap of trouble down the road. In going through 40 years of audited financial statements here not too long ago, and I'm going to share some of that with you recently, I encountered a situation back in 19, in, disclosed in 1992, there was a similar need, and um, there was discussion in that audited financial statement in 1992 about a special assessment to cover the cost of road resurfacing. We haven't always gotten state money. The point is simply that and I heard somebody in this community, or maybe I read it on somebody's website or something, that, uh, oh, well, clearly we haven't done anything about road resurfacing in the past few years, so that's proof that we don't need to. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, we're deferring the problem. We've consciously done so, but we're running out of time, it seems to me. You need to see that on my website. You deferred it. We deferred it according to a, with a, a plan okay. of action. Oh, no, no, we did it consciously. No, no, yeah, yeah. we did it consciously. But how many years can you do it and get away with it? Well, you, all right, so that's, we, all, that's all. That's all. The whole plan. issue here was that we are watching it. Thanks for the first time. And this is we'll this is good stuff. It. If, all right. If yeah. I may, if I may, just Tom. Sure. The one thing that's that people should know is is that this money is a benefit to them. It's not so we can buy extra stuff or do extra stuff. Oh, absolutely. Stuff. It, it's, 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 it's hard to show one line for line exactly how much is going to lower the assessments or it's going to lower the next increase but it is going to have a positive impact on our, our assessments absolutely if we don't use this money if we don't have this money we got to yeah you're right, right. Dave. you're right no you're absolutely right okay can we, can we put a light on yeah that's I mean, the people well, are going to look at this video or think we're all meeting in a dark room actually, all right. maybe it's secret one, one light one light yeah 
Yeah. Okay. 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 Let's, let's do numbers. Let's do our numbers. It's too bright. Too bright? Sarah. sunglasses on. Okay. Uh, here, this is our, our monthly numbers. I give it to you, um, you know, each month. Uh, we, this is through June. Uh, if you'll notice, we are, we're actually doing pretty good. Bottom line, we're $41,000 uh, ahead of budget right now. Uh, we have, have two deltas, uh, two, two big ones that I'm looking at. Uh, but let's start at the top. Public Works is, is spot on. Uh, public Safety, that's, I mean, when you're $2,000, that's a flex. It just depends on hours or guy, you know, police department's working. Uh, how much funding, I mean, public safety covers fire. There's a lot of things that go in that. So to be 2,000 in the red is, I mean, we could be that way, we could be equally that way the next month. Uh, recreation, I'm real pleased with. We're up uh, 38,000. Aquatics, which is something we talked at length about earlier, we're up about 3,100. Uh, golf appears to be up, uh, and that includes, you know, since it's and F and B, that includes Turns Grill, uh, appears to be up, uh, almost 14,000 uh, and then beach club numbers are off a little bit uh, are both our food and beverage beach club and yacht club uh, that's a concern for me beach club is uh, we just don't have as many patrons coming in I've, I've been over speaking with Linda at quite some length about this uh, you know a lot more folks are bringing you know when they pull up in the beach park parking lot uh, they're bringing their coolers they're going out to the beach they're you know they're bringing things from home so there's not quite as much going on from folks coming up to buy a sandwich a, a hot dog a, a you know any of those type of things so we're off a little bit there uh, and, and I can I can see that one a little bit just from a, an economy standpoint you know we're tracking it we're trying to find out there's other specials, those type things we can do. We, we're, we're changing up our, our, our entertainment focus there a little bit, see if we can attract some more clientele. Yacht Club's where my concern is. Uh, you'll notice we're, we're $30,000 uh, in the red on the Yacht Club. Now I've got another slide I want, I went in more detail, but before I get to it, other than the Yacht Club, does anybody have any questions? I mean, I'm pleased we're, we're 41 ahead of budget, so that's a real, real positive. Uh, the, the concern for, you know, the primary concern for me is the Yacht Club, you know, getting that turned. Yeah, the Beach Club, I don't know, when I looked at Mark's report, it seemed to me that the primary thing was you, you scheduled a banquet or you budgeted for a banquet and you didn't get a banquet. I well, mean, that's, that's a substantial amount of the law. Banquet, banquet service is way off. both facilities. Banquets are way off, uh, both in the Yacht Club and yeah. uh, the Beach Club. Well, in the Beach Club, it's, it's just uh, sticks out. It is in the Yacht Club, too, I noticed that. 36, or 34,000 off in the Yacht Club. Yeah, but that doesn't have as much of it, 34,000 on the bottom line, just in revenues. But, okay. okay. Any questions about these? I want to get to the Yacht Club, as you will. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to the Yacht Club. I, I, I like to, you know, make sure I lead so everyone can see. Uh, this is... Just I pulled some specific items. I say specific. These were the more egregious items in the financial statements. Um, you know, a lot of folks don't. You guys are getting them. They're available. Um, uh, we printed some. We just uh, did them. Yeah. But what I did was pull out information uh, that we're that we're focusing on right now. Uh, you know, it's food banquet. Uh, we're below budget. You know, I'm, and again, what I've done just so everybody knows, we have a long spreadsheet. Uh, if I may borrow this for just a second, this is, it's all in your board packets and it's available for everybody. But what I've done is taken some, just some snapshots, some items out of here because I think they're the most important to focus on. It's not, yeah, all the writing you had, yeah. <laughs> what I've done is She's just done. kind of condensed it into something a little yeah. easier to look at. Yeah, good. Yeah, so uh, food banquet, uh, just to point out, uh, we, uh, our revenues are 57 seven. This is year-to-date. This is not monthly. This, these are year-to-date numbers. Uh, year-to-date budgeted was 83.6. So we're approximately 26,000 below budget on our food banquet uh, revenue side. Okay. Just as a comparison, uh, and and like Mr. Stevens had, had noted earlier with the aquatics, how do we compare it year over year? I did, I did make sure I pull out and show you the 2010 numbers. Uh, at this time last year, uh, we were at 74,394 in revenue. You go back to the first column compared to the 57,702 is where we actually are right now. 
So we're almost 17,000 off of the um, 2010 numbers, basically last year's numbers. Uh, you can do the same type of comparison uh, with the beverage banquet. I understand on our financials, we report food and beverage as two separate items. We have regular food uh, as well as banquet food. We have regular beverage and banquet beverage, and that's how it's reported on our financials. You go to year-to-date costs. Uh, again, revenue is what's being generated. There, that seems to be the most egregious there. Uh, big concern I have right now are year-to-date costs. Wages and benefits. I'm going to go to column two for a minute. We had budgeted $144,000 in wages and benefits. I understand that's wages and benefits includes all the perks that go with with the the actual dollar figure of the of how much you're paying them. You know, from a wage standpoint. Uh, but year-to-date costs are actually 156. So we're really running pretty high there, um, which is almost a $12,000 delta for us. Again, something we need to take a look at. Wages are way off. If you go year over year, and again, I want to make sure I pointed that out, just to, from a comparison, uh, last year we were at 100,286 versus 156, 117 year to date for us. So we have a wage issue right now we need to look at. Uh, I know we did some extended hours. Uh, I know that we've extended you know some of our our activities over there but I'm not sure we extended so much that we should have a 50 almost fifty six thousand dollar Delta right now in wages uh, we need to look at that we are uh, we're, we're two months into uh, please understand we're two months into the season from from a budgetary standpoint May and June but these are the uh, you know highlights they're they're low lights but they're factors so we need to look at those and figure out what we need to do to address them uh, food food costs are are higher right now. Uh, I, that doesn't surprise me as much from a, we're selling more products, so I would expect the cost to be high, but when you look at, at uh, our, our percentage of gain on any product sold, we're running a little high in that area. Now, I expect some of that, uh, some people are questioning it. Truth of the matter is, we're, we are buying better product than we have in years past. Uh, we're, we're, we're putting an effort to offer more quality product to those who come and, and use the, yacht, you know, the dining facilities, in particular the yacht club, uh, you know, if you you can buy different levels of tuna, you can buy different different levels of chicken. Different. I mean, you all know you go to the supermarket. You want the the chicken breast from Purdue, the one from, you know, some of the others. Compare it a bit. We're we're going a little higher end with the quality of product we're buying. So I knew that was going to move our food cost off a little bit. Uh, didn't expect it to be quite that high, but we're looking at it. I mean, we're addressing it, we're trying to figure out what we need to do. They're the most egregious. There's some other things, some of our um, supply costs are a little higher. Again, when you're doing, you know, we're selling more beverages, you got more cups, your supply costs go up a little, okay? They're the most egregious that I can point out. Not, not to pile on, but I'm going to. Go ahead, I figured I'd lead with the chin. I'm going to. Uh, as you know, I looked at the, at the May report and and I came up with a, uh, a revenue to wages. 89% of your revenue was going to wages. I don't know what the percentage will be here, but my guess is it will be similar in nature. Uh, I'm told by people who run restaurants that your revenue to wages benefits ought to be about 40%. So you, you said the wages and benefits are too high. Boy, do I agree. Uh, I, don't know what, I don't know what the game plan is going to be, but whatever it is, it's got to happen fast. Because uh, we're we're yeah you know, we're we're the we're, we're dying. We're, the revenue is up. I'm going to get to that. All right. Well, I, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not leaving sorry. it down though. But yeah, I'll yeah, give you yeah. the I know. I know. But uh, you know, I'm sorry. But that, that, go ahead. Yeah. Um, just sort of another point. If you know, we talked about the banquets and like we haven't had the banquet sales and the banquet is a key, key contributor, but it's not quite as much a key contributor as you're, you're, uh, you're saying. If you, you're, what you're basically doing on this chart is uh, you're showing the, uh, the gross revenues. Okay, if you look at the net revenues, what you find out is, is that the, uh, the costs of uh, banquets are also significantly lower on a percentage basis than the cost of the uh, the regular food. So if you look at, if you compare, you have to do a little arithmetic, but if you compare net revenues, banquets, 
to net revenues, uh, uh, food and uh, regular, we call it, um, you'll find out that it's really not that much of a, uh, an impact on the bottom line, as you might assume from just looking at the revenues. Dave, I did now, the same assessment as basically a wash. Oh, yeah, I don't it. think so. Comparatively. I don't no, think I'm so. agreeing with it. Oh, you're agreeing I'm with agreeing it. Okay. With it. Okay, the other, the other I'll side... Disagree. I'll, disagree. I'll disagree in a moment. The other I'll side, why. I'll the other side of the coin is, is that when you get down to wages and benefits, which are broken out, okay, but on the other hand, have been, taking a page from your budget, you know, have been, uh, and if you look at the expenses of banquet, I mean, you're talking about maybe the payroll expenses for a banquet, for an example, um, is perhaps 10%, 12%. Of the uh, of the the cost of a uh, banquet, uh, whereas typically the payroll costs of food and beverage are about in the area. I'm just roughly 60 percent, 65 percent, and this is you can go across the line on these past years. So what I'm saying is is that the problem is not banquets. Not a, it could be a little bit but mainly regular food and beverage, the staffing of regular food and beverage, the cost of the foods of regular food and beverage, how we're doing regular food and beverage. That's where we're gonna lose our money. Okay. Right? If I'm... Well, well, yeah, so. yeah, I'm first here, John. That's okay, so I have my back to you, I apologize. I go over there three, four times a week, and I don't need to look at the end of the month report for July and the end of the month report for August to see that we should make something make some changes immediately. When I go over there, and there might be two or three tables that are there, but there are five people over in the Java Bay area, there are three or four people over in the bar area, I don't know how many are in the kitchen. An RFP reduction in the force right now uh, is probably something that's gonna have to be looked at a whole lot quicker because there's where the cost is. That's where we're really getting hurt. I think Bobby knows that. But it's something, see, it's not just, it's not just over here. You're looking at that everywhere around, in and around Ocean City, not just us. We can, we can have the ability right now to make an adjustment now so that it's not going to hurt so much later in the year. But I think uh, the number of folks that are over there for the amount of businesses coming in the door is way too high. John, then Pete. Uh, a question. Uh, we're looking at year to day 2010 as 100 grand, but you added some additional personnel, such as a chef, am I right? Correct. I mean, that's in your 144 figure. Correct. So, really, what we're talking about is a delta of $12,000, is really what we're talking about. Because I don't think the year, uh, year 2010 is a real number to be looking at because we had cut back significantly, and people have said we'd cut back in service. Your goal was to try to bring it back to a level of service that increased people coming back into yes. the, yeah. to the young club, et cetera. So what we're talking about is we're down about $12,000, as I think. Now, I'm not sure where that 12, 12 grand comes from, but I don't think it's fair to compare it to the 55 when you take a look at the additional people you added on to provide better services. Okay. And, and the same goes with food. The trend before was to cut, 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 cut. And we talked about that a year ago, saying that was not the way we wanted to continue to go. We wanted to improve the quality of food, improve the quality of service, and we knew there was an expense that went with that. So I, I think in fairness to, to Bob and to the, the, the club operations, we've got to let this go through the year. It may hurt, but at the end, I think it's just similar with the rest of them. At that point in time, Bob can come back and make a fair decision as to what we need and what we don't need. I, I, that's all I'm saying, Bob. I don't think it's as, as, as despifying as some people would say that. I don't like negative numbers, right. but we're, we're trying right. new things. <laughs> I understand that, but we're trying new things. I got you, Jim. All right, I'll jump with one leg instead of two. Sorry, go ahead. No, I mean, we're uh, behind budget by, what, $30,000? 30000 what Bob, what you don't have up on there is the uh, cost of food. You've got the revenue and budget and so on and so on. But the gross margin um, is a really important thing. That's your revenue minus the cost of delivering the product, the food, the steaks, the hot dogs, whatever it is. And of our budget range of $30,000, 13 of it is gross margin. 
and that's primarily banquet. Mm -hmm. The 13,000 variance in the gross margin, um, there's also operating expenses, primarily salaries as we've been talking, of 16. So that outweighs any gross margin. The gross margin, as a business proposition, on banquets, we all know, I believe, that it's significantly higher than on the regular. So the fact that the revenues of the um, banquet is off is costing us more than its proportionate share of the revenue because of the higher margins being lost, right? Correct. Um, banquet sales, the banquet is contributing a negative gross margin to budget of 25 grand. Mm -hmm. Regular is positive gross margin <coughs> of 13. Thus you get to the combined. So banquet is the biggest contributor to this at the gross margin line. But that pales in comparison to the overall, as you all have been talking, Thank you. the personnel costs. And, and it seems to me that I would applaud the gross margins to cheering up. By the way, gross margins in the aggregate are only off 6% from the budget demand. Gross margin is budgeted at um, 227 uh, and we're at 214. It's 6% off, okay? Um, and that could easily be explained by up, making a little better product, a little additional cost, and so forth. Uh, but it's also explained by the fact that that which gives you greater margins is off more than that which has the, the, the lower. So anyway, it seems to me we have a management issue with the wages, benefits, and staffing. Uh, and, and that is going to require fixing, and I think, I, I don't know how you do that, uh, but managing those personnel costs is huge. And that is the biggest part of the f and Now, it's only two months, for heaven's sake, it's also. I recognize that. Um, May and June, right? So we got more time to go, but our season is going to end here at the end of August for the most part. So, but I think focusing on um, that wage, a better, better understanding what it is exactly uh, is the thing to do. But it's not a disaster. It is not a disaster as I see it. I agree with you. Okay? Mm -hmm. I um, think that it depends you, what you call a disaster. That's right. We budgeted $84,000. As a as a loss for the uh, yacht club. Now, are we or not? We're not going to hit 180,000. That's the question. Yeah. And if you don't do something about it now, <laughs> you're, you're right. you will. Right. And that's why attacking these personnel costs now is, I think, the appropriate thing to do. I think the wages horses down period. We're all kicking it at this point. He even brought it up, we just piled on, and I started that, and I realized, <laughs> but that's the way it goes. But there's another solution, there's too, a, and that's to drive revenue. Yeah, well, it, let's get to the next to slide. The next slide. Just, just, you guys haven't seen the next slide. Yeah, just, I bring this up because we're tracking it, just so you all know, we're not hiding it or, or not putting it out. And I'd have put the whole financial in there, it's just too hard to put up there where yeah, it's yeah. easy to see. So I try to cut out the, the, the very lowest points. There you go. To the opposite side, you guys know I'm a positive person. So let's look at this. Uh, food regular year to date is $163,599. We had budgeted 153.7, mm -hmm. so we're almost 10 grand over in our year to date revenues, basically our sales for our food regular. Okay. Again, comparing to last year which was, was a good year for us from the food and beverage, we're, uh, from, from the food regular, we're almost $52,000 in two months ahead of last year's number at the same time. Combine that with the beverage of 98.8, which we budgeted almost 76, which gives us about 23,000 ahead of budget, compared to 75 last year, that's another close to $23,000 end result with the food regular and food beverage is a $75,000 increase over last year's number in two months. Revenues. Reason, mm -hmm. And I think I said revenues several times. Revenues. Mm -hmm. Yes, revenues. I'm just yeah. emphasizing it. That's a good thing. Revenues in those areas are way revenues higher Revenues are a than good they, thing depending upon how much you spent to get the revenues and uh, otherwise again, they can be a bad thing. <laughs> and that's measured by the gross Here's market. what I'm going to tell you guys. Of course that's I am well, we very, should be reporting. Despite what Mr. Well, Stevens made right here. Gentlemen, if I can finish, I'll be done in just a moment you guys have at it. <laughs> not only are we tracking what's not working well, we are very, very pleased with the revenues generated. It has been our primary focus leading into the beginning of the season. I am very pleased with the outcome 
on the revenues. Without revenues, nothing else matters. Now what we have to do, revenues coming in means we've, we've at least started hitting the mark to get people to come spend their money. Now what we have to do is continue to deliver, keep those revenues up, and do a better job managing the expense side of it. That's why I start with the expense. We're aware of it. If you go back and look at history, this is the most we've made in this two-month period ever. Art tried to go back and look for me. We are way ahead of anything expected. That's a very, very positive. Is it all positive? Absolutely not. But if I didn't have the revenues and the expenses were real high, then we would have a disaster. We don't. We're showing positives at the end. Bottom I'm line sorry. on this thing, Bob, as far as I'm concerned, is what this page shows me is the remodeling worked, the marketing is working, we've teed it up, yes. the customers are coming, everything you set out to do to regenerate and revive that place as, as a business model is working, except for the management of the wages and, and benefits, and potentially that's something you clearly already identified that you want to pay attention to. So, I, to me, that's what this number says to me. John? I think you're being overly, I mean, I understand no one likes negative numbers, but we did give Bob a mandate back a while ago to say, do what you can to improve revenues, and part of that was to bring on new staff yes. and bring up the quality of food from the one cent bacon to maybe a five cent piece of bacon. I mean, you know, there's all types of, so, yep. and, and Bob has done that. Yes, now what we're into. That's how we got this. Yes. But now we're into the tweaking stage. And you've right. got to give Bob the opportunity to begin to tweak that. Because okay. we added a, a chef, which is a brand new expense that we hadn't had for almost a year. Am I correct? You are, but we've made some changes. Well, I understand that. But I, I, my, my point is that adds to that figure that we're talking about here, the 156 to 144. Yes. And hundred grand, and I'm just saying that we we can't be overly harsh two months into the main season. John, so. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, but I don't think it's quite addressing the issue. I mean, we added a chef, but we did all of those things, and we talked about them during the budget uh, meeting, yeah. and we deliberately budgeted the eighty-four thousand dollar loss with those salaries yeah. embedded in it. I understand. Okay, that. now we're looking at maybe. A loss that's double or more of that, and and that's the issue. <laughs> I mean, so let's not gloss over I it. Mean, it's a problem. I, I, I'm not glossing over it. We got to give Bob the opportune time, the of opportunity course. to tweak it. Okay? He's the one that's got to do it without beating him up on this here at this stage of life. I think he's got a handle on it. I, I don't. I'm I don't. First to beat him up. I, I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't think it. I don't think it's beating him up to point out that, and I think we all agree. And he said there's a serious problem, and it has to be fixed. Okay. I think Pete, Tom, less and then Pete. Tom, I think you're a little, in my opinion, generous in your. Less than Pete. Let me figure that out. You're less than Pete, so okay. So Pete goes first, I guess. He always wants to be last, so we're going to let him be last. No, Pete just wants to talk. I just want to mess with him. Let's go ahead. Wait a minute. I wasn't even finished. I was interrupted. Tom. Yes. My point is this, and it's a serious one. I think you're being too generous in your comments about the model working and driving the revenue and so forth and so on. Uh, I think we ought to be producing more revenue. I, I don't know. Last Saturday night was a perfect example. Uh, at the community church, there was a wonderful function. I don't know how many in the room were there. It was from 4 o'clock, ended at 6.30. Friends of mine were extremely disappointed when we were over the Yacht Club. Lots of people were looking for a place to go have dinner after that. That upstairs dining was closed. You could sit outside over top of the music, which People were coming there, Bob, I don't know if you know this, and leaving because they couldn't be accommodated mm -hmm. for dinner, while the dining room upstairs sat closed because it was set up for the next day's brunch. Driving traffic, we have to constantly reinforce with driving revenue, dry, open for business, except when it's inconvenient for somebody to come in and set up staff. People were very frustrated because they couldn't spend their money, and I don't think we ought to have a condition where they can't spend the money at the yacht club. Well, um, I, I agree that uh, there should be some adjustments made. Uh, you do see a little some people at, at certain parts of the of the week, certain parts of the evening, um, standing around. Apparently, uh, the customers aren't there. But for most of the 
time, especially on weekends, the customers are there. And the experience that you get from the people that are there is that it's very positive. They like what's been done. They like, they like the food, with few exceptions. As a matter of fact, we have got ourselves into an opposite problem because there have been a couple of occasions when there were so many people there that it slowed up the kitchen, which causes some delays. <laughs> That's a different kind of thing. There are things that need to be done, but uh, just keep in mind what that place is. Um, it's our amenity for the enjoyment of our people. Uh, definitely we should strive to break even or make money, but it's not the absolute end yeah. focus of that place. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Okay. Uh, very good. It was, uh, we kind of helped you reinforce your own wage thing you knew about, but sorry. But well, we're only 30000 negative to budget after two right. months, right? Okay. We're 42 ahead for the entire budget. The entire budget is still 42 ahead. I'm not, we're not going to... No, 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 no. Right. Okay. Right, right, right. Is that it? That's it for me. Okay. About time. Uh, uh, resolution MO2. Mr. Stevens. <laughs> okay. Uh, can, can I ask uh, that we do MO8 first? Sure. We can do that. Um, MO8 is up for its... Uh, you all should have copies of it and have had previously copies of it. This is a, to do with association manuals. It's up for a second reading. Um, the general manager has read and worked with, I understand, Jim Trummel uh, on this and, and basically approves it. And um, unless there are any discussions or questions, I would like to uh, move uh, that uh, we accept MO8 as written and this will constitute the second reading and it will be official. So moved. So moved. Second. Discussion. So no changes, Dave, right? To no the changes. previous change. No, no changes. Just Call want to confirm that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, MO2 is a little <laughs> different. <laughs> okay, I've, uh, favor. I've attached a, uh, and this, this, by the way, underwent substantial changes by the uh, uh, bylaws and resolution committee. Okay, you, you got my back, Jim? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, which made substantial changes to it because what they attempted to do was to eliminate a number of other uh, resolutions and incorporate them into it. So basically, and what they tried to do, and I think we're very successful at, is to incorporate these things uh, and make them policy neutral. In other words, what it said before is, should be what it said now, that we didn't, no changes in policy uh, uh, recommended. Okay, I put that out to the board. I received some comments from Tom and Pete, and um, I sent out some comments on the comments, and I sent out. Uh, uh, so you killed a lot of trees, but yeah, I know. It's, it, but I, you know, um, but this it's important that that we do these resolutions yep. in a way that doesn't slip in changes in the policy that we actually <laughs> keep. Now, if we want to change the resolutions of the policy, then we should do that, you know, kind of separate from this. Anyway, so um, I sent those out to everybody, so everybody saw the, the, the various comments. And now with the final product here is um, what I call a, a final uh, to be approved resolution. Now, there were areas where there could have been some kinds of, uh, where there were, how do I put it, I want to put it, where I use my best judgment in resolving the issues, okay, and I italicize and underline those, and uh, so any, everybody can see them. I didn't italicize and underline your editorial changes, they're, they're in there, Pete. <laughs> it's basically, I'm, I'm pretty, yeah, they're in there. I didn't even keep a copy of it. They gave you and said, do it as you see fit. Yeah, right, as best as I could understand your hieroglyphics. <laughs> hieroglyphics, I love your comment. <laughs> Why don't you just work through? Your okay, you would like to go through the size version of the document with the way you 
Okay. So the first thing in uh, this is the, yeah. if you want to do it that okay, that's fine. We go through amenities uh, four. Uh, amenities, goals, and objectives. Let's see. Um, there was a suggestion. Uh, membership and approve and enhance the quality of life. That's as was, as it, as it was sent uh, over. And the recommended changes um, were, uh, I think, to add and guests in there. Was that that the one time? And guests. I yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. yeah, and I guess, I guess m my point was that the, the real purpose is, is only for the members, but it does benefit the members if it's good for the guests. I mean, it's so their it, guests. It's their guests. And it's so, their it's guests. so that was my point in suggesting that it be left as is. I'm not gonna. Yeah, it's. That's not a. I'm not yeah, gonna push hard on that big one at all. <laughs> okay, the next one is uh, interesting. Question: yeah, as, you, get some more stuff. as you go into number five, classification of useful amenities. Um, today, I think we just approved the new amenity, the dog park. Yes. Does that fall into A or B? Well, certainly not fee based. It's, I, I think it's we, we, yeah. we only approve moving forward with it. Well, now, the question is would it approve? Uh, and that depends on it's TBD, John. It depends on what they call it. I think it depends really. It's, it's, not it's not appropriate, in my judgment, to include it in here now. Okay. Because it doesn't exist now. Mm. Okay. okay. We've authorized moving ahead with it, but yeah. Okay, I'm doing this. For I can't raise the money. Okay. Um, we're okay. We're on uh, C. C. Okay. This is a change of all the amenities of the association are available to the general public. It originally read. Yep. Except um, uh, the except for beach parking and marinas, and um, this is me only. Uh, I don't think I'm changing the policy, but I suggest taking out those two exceptions and saying subject to availability instead. I like the way you've done that. I do too. Yeah, because for good reasons. Okay. <laughs> the old language with the current exception of the Marine and Beach Club parking, you simply said subject to availability. Yeah. I like okay. it. Okay. We go to funding of amenities, B, operating costs. Um, and this is simply a editorial change. Um, Tom, I think, has suggested it and then, or that this sentence we put in, and Pete reworded his sentence, and this is, I believe, as you reworded it. Yeah, by, covered by a portion of the annual assessment. Yeah. Yeah. Just, that's you know. Fine. Yep. That's just a clarification. Right. Okay, membership value. Okay, pri nine, pricing and fees. Amenity pricing and fee structure shall be established to meet diverse circumstances and need of the association. Membership, what was the change on that, Pete? General Association. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Charter membership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole charter. Okay. Charter thing. Okay. We're, 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 we're not, uh, charter memberships are very much alive in part of Ocean Pines. And, and there are five, <laughs> there are five people who have charter memberships. And we don't want to ignore them. Four, then however, three, then two. However, we, we didn't feel it was necessary uh, to, to actually put the words in. And we have, as you'll see later, done something with that section. Good for you. Okay. Um, the fee amenities. The general manager with the approval of the board shall establish annually a schedule fees. This is as is. It reads as it was. Okay. The suggestion was that the uh, general manager be allowed on his own initiative to adjust fees up to 15%. Um, I, that is a policy decision, policy change. Uh, not that we can't do it, but I think that re requires more discussion than we want to have in just approving this. I personally have a problem with it. I mean, definitely. Say, say it is, what you have a problem with is? With this, was Tom's recommended change. I, I okay. did not. And Tom, I un Tom's recommended change, to be clear, gave yeah. some latitude to the general right. manager where he did not need board approval, correct? To change the fee. And that was a 10% factor, right? 15%. 15 15%. 
You, on the other hand, would suggest by this language and asking us to approve it, I side with Tom because it seems to me that if he, he's already made, I didn't know this until the uh, town hall meeting, Tom, Tom, uh, Bob, where I think you instituted a $2 charge for a uh, pool, for example, aquatics, uh, because of some abuse of people saying that they weren't going to go in the pool and didn't pay and then went in and then went in the pool. Uh, other people who came in and said, I'm not using the pool, I just want to sit here and read a book for the next few hours and take up seats that other people might otherwise. So he made that $2 change, right? And it's, you, I remember as a board member approving that. I, I just think... But if you had this language in here and, and dealt with it, we, right. he'd have to come to us and say, I want board approval for a $2, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. The, and he's already done it, and I don't think there's any big fuss. But now we're talking about policy, and I think... The policy here says, the way it's worded, it says any... Right. Yeah, he Let's not create things it. to violate the policy. But we must approve it. This, this, yeah. by the way, let me just point yeah. out, is exactly the way the I policy know. has I been know. forever. And as okay. a policy, I think okay. we need some latitude. Fine. And but, uh, we're and a policy-making group, and uh, for the general manager to have to come to us every time he, he wants to make a modest little change in, in the fee structure during the course of a year, and I'll cite the example perhaps of also golf, where I think some changes have been made. Uh, or might be made in the future. Let's assume that uh, in October it makes sense to adjust the pricing to attract more business. Whatever the circumstances are, do we as a board want to get involved in, in that, those things or not? So not your proposal, right. Tom, was to uh, put some parameters in here whereby we wouldn't have to approve every little the price change, right? Yeah, well, usage. Okay, so that's a policy matter. Yeah, we can either say we want to be involved in every little change or provide some latitude. I opt for the latter. Well, sure. I can say that I believe that the wording as it was um, is so broad that it can include any change for anything. You, you want to talk about a $2 change, but 15% of the membership fee for the golf course uh, for a family membership would be a $300 change. And Tom's language would cover that too. <laughs> and the general manager could do it. And, uh, and yes, I would as a board member want to hear that. The point is, is we approve these things as part of the budget. They're not a separate item. I right. mean, and... We're talking about mid-year changes. We're talking about what? We're talking about mid-year changes. We're talking about mid-year changes right. that could be a $2 change, or a, and I don't want to particularly know about it, or, <laughs> or a, a $300 change in membership that's already been established. I mean, if you're going to write that into this, and I strongly recommend you don't, if you want to, come back to it, write a motion, and we can, we can change it. But that motion needs to be thought out a lot more than just adding a, th those words now. Those words are not, uh, they, they're too broad. So, Bob, what kind of flexibility do you need here? Because I understand Dave's, you know, $300 change of the golf, so I get that. What, what kind of flexibility do you need during the year? I, I don't know that I have a dollar figure on it. Okay. Um, I, I think I've exercised good judgment yeah, and thus far, so I mean I intend to continue using that same level. Whatever you guys decide. We don't want I you to violate having, our policies. Well, uh, having a little flexibility, I, I mean think about it guys, I have, I have the ability to sign off on checks up to a certain amount, uh, mm -hmm. transfer monies, far exceeds any of these amounts we're talking about. Well, I guess in the aggregate using Mr. Stevens' approach of $300 for golf, but my focus is generating income, so I'm, uh, again, this is a longer policy than, than this board or myself once it's passed, unless someone goes to change it. So it's really a, a how do you guys feel long term with what you want your senior manager doing with running day-to-day -day operations? As, as a practical matter, this has been working with multiple generation, uh, uh, general managers for years. And as a practical matter, I don't think small changes in fee structure. I'm sure all general managers have uh, have uh, have done it. And basically, what this this says is, look, you have to hold to what you told us in the budget for anything significant. Two dollars isn't significant. Yeah, but this doesn't say significant. It doesn't. Well, it doesn't say anything except that board approval is required. A little flexibility and, from and, my standpoint. And all I'm sense. saying is that if we, we can modify this anytime we want. With all these changes, Dave, this is considered a first reading, correct? No, it's, no yeah, it is a first well, reading. Well, but we're going to have another meeting here soon to do a second. Yeah, okay. that's true. But okay, well, we we'll read on that. Yeah. And I will we'll come back with some draft language that I think may take care okay. of us. Move on. And, and, and okay. by the way, I'll just say this in conclusion. 
Dave, your $300 example hit home with me. And, and so maybe yeah. the language is just fine if we do it with a wink and a nod. About $2 like I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it. But I, okay. Um, okay, where were we at? Oh, uh, eligibility. Um, you can ignore my comment. I got your, your response, so I'm okay. Okay, yeah, and uh, basically, yeah, this, this, okay. just for the people, it says, never mind, we don't have to. The, the people can read it because they, they've got it. Okay. Um, Charter Club membership. Okay, what I did here, as you can see, is take out a fairly longish section Thank on you, Dave. Charter Club <laughs> membership yeah. and say you can get the uh, rules and restrictions at the uh, membership the office. office. But, but on the other hand, if you weren't here between 1984 and 1985 and been paying it every year since then, you don't have one. And we're, down and you five, can't, we're down to five people? Yeah, five people. You can't get one. <coughs> if I had one, I'd keep paying it just because I like the artifact kind of thing. Okay, let's go to um, 6, yeah, 13 uh, D. This was a comment. Um, this came from me. Because yeah. What we have to be careful of I want to talk is about that there's a difference well, between a property owner and a lot and a... And a and oh, no, no, we're not on that one yet. I'm sorry. Maybe did I miss that one? We're on schedule. What are we on? I was on 11. Scheduling? Are you in 13 or? Have we jumped from 11 to 13? Well, there's well, I thought 11 B comment change in here. Do you just accept it? Not, not on this piece. Wait a minute. Not on this 11 piece. B should have a change. I could have missed something. Yeah. No, it says notwithstanding 11 A, no more than one parking permit will be issued to the property address, right? That's what I put in. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah but we have to say notwithstanding 11 A because we. Right. Okay. So you that was, that. that was yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We just didn't talk about it here. That's all. You just went right by it. Oh no, I, I considered that a. <laughs> okay. I didn't. I didn't use any discretion. Did you I just put it in. Yeah. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're up to thirteen. Well, why do you even need a? Why don't you just say no more than one parking permit will be issued to a property address? Now you had your chance, John. You can't. Get Sorry, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, just accept it. It's a lawyer. Lame duck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thirteen B. What are you well, I guess this is coming after I am off the board, and we're not having a special meeting on it, huh? Okay, prior to, uh, oh yeah, this is just clar This is just a clarification. Prior to the beginning of each calendar year, the GM shall initiate and execute the process for reserving and scheduling amenities for the coming year. Public notification shall provide interesting organizations at least 30 days to apply. And since I put that in, Jim Trummel told me that there was actually language in some of the procedures that sort of pinned down the dates and everything. However, he believes that this gives the general manager more general language here yeah more general language okay. here yes. so this is not non-controversial i think uh going down to f individuals and organizations using the organization shall the organization should be facility how's the organization going to use the organization i don't know how the organization <laughs> is going to use the organization <laughs> <laughs> I suspect it should be facility. I think you. I think you. Yeah, there you go, Pete. Very good. I do read this stuff. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. We will put that facility in there. Okay. In the current year, shall have preference over organizations applying for the first time. This is a Tom Terry comment about you know having this preference. I added. However, this preference shall not extend more than one year if there are other organiz if there are other organizations applying, applying for the same uh, time and space. Vaguely, in my memory, I remember having this discussion before. I mean, I don't remember which year it was or which group of people or which board. Maybe it was at the beginning of doing this amendment, which is so probably two ago. years ago. Two years ago. <laughs> And um, and uh, and <coughs> the the issue being, you know, in fairness, you know, can you grandfather, you know, a group to use a facility forever? Forever. I mean, and the question the, and the Christmas know, party on such and such before Christmas. I always get it, no matter what. Yeah. Well, that's that's separate. We can write that in there. And the <laughs> but uh, and I just throw it open. I mean, I I believe. In fairness, we ought to look at that. I mean, and, and say, say no. I mean, I do believe in the preference uh, coming up. But 
what does this language then say? Uh, that a one year there's a one year limit on how many years you can reserve the same. If there are other organizations <laughs> applying for the same time and space, you're limited. There were some other thoughts, Tom, about limiting sure. it to three years or five years or what? What, what, what are we ending up with? Well, that was actually Dave well, must have added that because my I wording, added that. Dave added yeah. that. My added, wording was if you used it the year before, you have the preference, and Dave has added that that preference only lasts a year. So that yeah, was your, I could have said two years. That I was could your addition. No yeah, matter. but but the point is, as it stood, it was forever. I mean, in perpetuity, as they say. In right? perpetuity. I think I might have even used perpetuity. Uh, well, what do we want it to be? Um, I, right now you've written it in one year, right? Yeah, I, I thought. Shall not extend more than one year if there are other organization. You need an S there. Yeah, you put that in already. Applying for the same time and space. Yeah. Is that what we really want to do? I don't know. I, okay. I, I when mean, are we going to decide that? Not not now. We're not going to solve that. Here. No, well, now. but between now and when we, okay. So we'll have to, the purpose yeah. of first reading is to, yeah. is to generate, generate some thoughts and questions. And that's, and, yeah, that's right. one of the, yeah, we can pass that. That's one of the uh, issues that okay. will come back in the second reading. I'll think about what you think is the yeah. best thing. Yep. There's yeah. got to be some reasonable thing in there, <laughs> uh, unless you take out the preference altogether and do it every year. And that's a possibility, too. Well, so the, the challenge yeah. that you have is probably with the board of directors meetings, because there are a lot of meetings that we fill this room and it becomes rather uncomfortable for our association members to be in here. And we don't necessarily know when those meetings are per se. Correct. So what you were saying, what I'm saying is, are you, is the board going to say, I want to use the community center on such and such, you know, and maybe only have 10 people there or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, John, I don't think this, this particular paragraph doesn't address that question. There's another paragraph. Yeah, that this one only addresses This only schedule. addresses advanced reservations. Well, well, this is advanced reservations. No, no, there's I, another I, paragraph that addresses what you're raising, right, Dave? Yeah, the next one. Okay. The next one. <laughs> okay, once scheduled use of an amenity has been authorized, no, no other activity may displace the scheduled activity without the agreement of the affected party. Uh, it is the responsibility of the party requesting a change in scheduling to obtain agreement of the association management of that facility and the association management must obtain approval of the affected party. Now that is a Tom Terry recommended change which I put in there, though I'm really not that keen on as I, I made the comment. That, that, that is, if, if I may, that is separate and distinct what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, when you have your organizational meeting in August to establish your meetings, you can at that time, as the number one priority, right. say, I want to use that place across year. the way for oh, the yeah. following year. That's something that we clearly have to address. Yes, it, today it, it, it needs to be where, where, addressed. You know, and then the right. second one comes in. Right. Okay. Yes. And then we can always release it as something. All right, well, let's get back to G. <coughs> you you want to say something about G? No, I just didn't. There, the, you guys are talking about it now. I just want to make sure I understand it. Uh, there's been times when I've been asked to move such as today, we, you know, potentially moving someone out so we can use right. a, a larger space. This says that, if I'm reading it correctly, we're not allowed to do that. Without all parties agree. Without the parties agreeing, that's what it said. Now, by the way, let me just put it out what it said before Tom Terry's uh, change. What it said before is that the requesting party would get together with the affected party and uh, and get their agreement, and with their agreement, uh, come to admin and say. So in other words, it takes you out of the loop. They got to work it out. And I thought that was a better way. I got to tell you, that's where my comment comes in too. Far as I, management team has to get involved and in de delineate. If two parties have same and one's already there, but one can work it out, they work it out and come to us. We'll change the schedule. That yeah. seems more okay. preferable than us trying to referee. Then Secondly, take my change out. So I'll take the change out the for change the second out. reading if everybody agrees yeah. with yeah. that. And, and, and the and second uh, part is what, the, with G written as it is, the board has, and we, I don't, since I've been doing this, we have not displaced anybody that has disagreed or, or we've never had an issue there and it, we always try to follow that. But does this now mean we have no room if the board decides they want to use another room you know we just know it's going to be a big meeting 
we have no right to displace well, another group? What I think Pete is suggesting is that at the beginning of the year, um, in the August meeting, that we're basically going to put a hold, a hold, hold on one of the rooms, and that you can schedule that room, but you have to make it clear to the people that they're using a time that that the board running, may may need. And they're running the risk. They're that running they may risk. have to be bumped. Yeah. Yes. That makes sense, Bob. It does. The challenge you're going to have with some of the groups that have kind of the long planning, you know, some of the real passionate groups that like to go in and put their schedule in. Yeah. It's only, it's, 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 only it's, it's only one morning. They may be passionate. It's only one morning. It's only one morning a month. <laughs> this would cover a really serious problem I had at the Yacht Club when a lady came to me and said that she'd been living here for 18 years and coming to the Yacht Club all that time and she wanted a seat at the bar now. <laughs> You, you, you wanted your seat? God bless. Yeah. So I just asked her, I said, okay, you and I will go up. You pick the seat and you and I will did go she up and tell the that person they have to leave. Did she own the stool next to the one you own? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so okay. so we know what we're doing about that. Let's yep. move oh, we're going to go. Move it along. Is there anything else? Uh, may I, uh, as a point of order, uh, yes. ask Jim uh, Trummel if he has any further comments on this? Jim? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, we cool? Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, we do need to get a, it's not clean, but a copy of your draft and post on the website. The draft is oh, for public for the, uh, first, for the first reading. Yeah. Yeah. I may be able to do it this afternoon. Um, I'll try. This was okay. a first reading? Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay. Thank you. New business. Dave, I'm sorry, and this buttons up all the resolutions, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, that, that's an important that, milestone you ought to take credit for, you and Jim. Yeah. This is. Once you get to the second reading, you're Not time to celebrate yet. It will, M02 is the last re, uh, resolution in, that's when you scheduled in what has been a almost four year. Yeah. Effort, yeah. yeah. Applause to every, everybody. That's there. precisely there, why I mentioned. A lot of people worked on it, and uh, none harder than Jim. Trump. And by the way, let me just point out two quick things. Um, the resolutions committee, and they'll send out reports, are now in the process of reviewing the resolutions that we've already approved. You know, way back when, they do this on a two-year cycle. They're not going to send them to the board for approval. And they're just going to report to the board that they've reviewed them per, you know, the requirement. And uh, if they see anything, then they'll, you know, suggest it. But Given recent history, nobody at this table will have to worry about it. No, that's very probable. Okay. Okay. Moving on. John. Kayaks. Okay. Uh, Tom asked me to just go over a Marine Activity Advisory Committee uh, report that they did on the kayak uh, uh, launch sites. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, there's three sites that are... Uh, that are currently being used by the residents. Those are in the uh, Ocean Pines Yacht Club uh, boat ramp, the Swimming Racket Club, and Whitehorse Park boat ramp. Uh, there are other potential sites, however, there's problems with each and every one of them. Uh, so I'll, let me just go with a summary of the findings. Based upon the MAC Committee's findings, the three existing kayak launch sites will meet the needs of the residents seeking to launch their kayaks within the association. Other potential sites are available but each prevents substantive issues and therefore we recommend these not be pursued, predominantly parking and access to them. Uh, the Ocean Pines Yacht Club ramp should be promoted as a primary kayak launch site to attract additional users to the Yacht Club facility such as the Java Beach Cafe. And uh, even though they, uh, uh, they are not recommending any new kayak launch sites at this time, the committee may revisit it at a later point in time because kayaking is becoming, uh, it seems to be a little bit growing, more popular yeah. and growing uh, than it has been in the last couple of years. So, uh, yeah, two things. May I say, first of all, uh, I've already said to the rest of the board, this is really an excellent report, not only because it requires that the board do nothing at all, which is in, in itself <laughs> good, but very wise group. And, uh, but, but, it was thorough and to the point. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, it, it left me with a question. I said, come on, you can't ask for nothing. Uh, my question, John, and you might 
pass it on to the matching uh, committee or whoever's doing it next year. Is there anything the board can do or the general manager can do to make the existing sites more friendly to the kayak users? I believe we sent something on, uh, Bob, did we not, about the lifts to get in and out of the kayaks? There are some commercial type lifts that can be made so it's easier to get in and out of them? There was some discussion. I, did, I don't think there was a formal request. I thought we may have sent something. I thought they may have sent something to you because it was relatively we can, inexpensive. We can That's the that only idea. thing for folks like you yeah. trying to get in and out of a kayak, which is rather John, drastic. Why don't you ask the committee uh, to make a formal recommendation? I was thinking of you and a look at look at Skinny over there inside. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> John, Mr. President, what did I miss? Uh, I have no idea. I was thinking uh, along the lines of a crane for us, John. Excuse me. By acclamation, I would suggest the board simply accept this report, and it was an excellent report. Good. Next. Okay. I've got, we got an issue here. Uh, the next issue is the election letter. Yeah. And I'm, Fortunately, we are in the middle of an election process, and if Rick were here, uh, I would have to ask him the same thing. Uh, I'm not going. Les, you and Rick are both, uh, we're being, something having to do with the existing election process is being brought to this board, and this board has two people sitting on it that are currently running for office. So. Uh, I'm going to have to ask Les to recuse himself from this discussion. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's delicate enough that something of this level is being brought to our board level in the middle of an election, uh, especially when we've got two sitting members running for election. So do you, can, were you? No. Were you all? Okay. <laughs> you, you don't have to leave. You just have to leave. Well, I got to leave for a different reason. Uh, I thought you might. <laughs> I thought you might welcome the opportunity. Is it an approved I, purpose? I would, actually. You didn't raise your hand. <laughs> now, the other, the other side of Get this Get that issue, off the tape. The other side of this issue, not only the fact that few people are running for election, is that, uh, and I, I, I'm on the verge of preempting this discussion because, uh, we are a board of directors and the committee that runs the election for us is an autonomous organization appointed by our board to make decisions in running our elections for us and I'm not sure the board of directors any board of directors at any time during the process of an election process should, even be should be even talking about anything like this and Dave I know you've got a concern with certain things but the committee made a decision to do something. They did not back off on that decision. They decided to do it. I understand you and I don't agree on whether it should be said or not, but the reality is I don't think this board has any business debating what the elections committee is doing in the middle of an election process, nor do we have any business stopping them from doing the work they're doing in the middle of that effort, unless it's egregious of what they're doing, and I see nothing here egregious. And a matter of fact, they've probably saved us over three thousand dollars this year, over last year. So uh, I, I I lay that out for, in all due respect to the issue that Dave believes he wants to bring to this table and to the committee. I did not stop it from being put on the agenda, but the more I thought about it, it's. We're in the middle of an executing cycle, and I don't think our board of directors ought to be in the business, especially right now, trying to tell the, the elections committee what they ought to be doing. Now, that's my thought on the process. Pete? Tom, no, no, let me just put it. So, we are being asked at this meeting as a board to make a decision on whether or not this letter goes out or not? Is that what we're, Dave, is that what you're intending? I haven't, I, I, I mean, the letter has not gone out, as I understand. The letter has not gone I out. I thought it went out. I, I, I just the learned the other day, and out. you know, you're. you're and, and by the way, Tom, uh, Tom, you just raised a slightly different issue, which is a whole nother topic of conversation. I believe you're in fact dead wrong. I mean, a committee and an election committee does not have the right to expend association funds 
that have not been approved by the board. It doesn't have. It, you know, Is it something in the budget day anything. for this? Yeah. No. Well, and more over, can't be more over, more over, more over. Each year, they in the do budget not election cost. An correct? election committee does not independently have the right to send out uh, a letter to our members without board approval. I mean, that's you know, it, it doesn't. They're they are independent to the extent that they have to run the election. But this, by the way, has nothing to do with running the election. This letter Nothing is a draft all. letter, and it is a draft, right? It is a draft letter, Dear and owner, by the way, it's coming from, from the, the committee to committee, the owners. And it indi indicates the names of those committee members. So this is a formal elections, it's on elections committee letterhead, by the way. It's not on association letterhead. All the, trying to cut the chase here. This is about a committee that decided as uh, what it should do to alleviate a problem is to mail um, I don't know, several hundred letters, a thousand letters, 951 letters. Uh, letters that cost $500 in aggregate to co-owners of properties to advise them that uh, what the process is for voting and the fact that the first listed party in a co-owned situation has gotten the official ballot. And this is just putting them on notice of that. Dave, as I understand your objection is uh, we shouldn't be spending $500. I know you say it's not the primary issue, but we're, we shouldn't be spending $500 to send this letter because it really hasn't been a problem and why should we be telling people what they should know on their own? Is that the, the gist of it? Yeah, I think the okay. the gist of it, except that I think you just raised the answer. Well, I'm not even Why it's on the agenda There's and what we're being asked to do. There's two things that are setting that are here. Uh, first of all, the letter is unnecessary. Secondly, it can add to the confusion. Thirdly, it, uh, it's an unnecessary cost, whether it's $50 or $500. We argue about uh, amounts less than that from time to time. And, uh, and fourth, it should not, absolutely not, be sent out by the election committee. It's on their letterhead. I don't care whose letter uh, headed on. I don't have they're, they're, they're an official, they're official committee uh, of, the no deal, of the association. And, you know, where does any committee have the right to expend association funds and simply send out a letter on their own without the approval of the board? I don't think so. Now, I submit to you that in the approved budget for this year are costs associated with the election. True? Yes. I don't know. You tell me. Yes. Well, how I, much? you've been through the budget. I, and how the much? answer is yes, of course, of course. Now, I hear what you're saying, Dave. Dave. You're not Dave. I'm talking about yeah. Dave. That you made reference to a three thousand dollars savings versus last, last year was a foul up, and everybody knows it, okay? And they recovered nicely, as you gave people credit for recovering nicely for last year. And they're trying to just reach out and be a little extra, as I gather it, careful about making sure they communicate properly with people who are being asked to vote. That's it. And it cost five hundred dollars. It's on their letterhead. I don't have any problem with that at all. We've got the chairman of that committee here, Judy. Fill us in on some of the dynamics here that's going on. Certainly. Um, Come on. Up. Okay. Now, last year, I wasn't involved in last year. I wasn't on the election committee, but. Um, You're going to stand right now. Why don't you sit there? Why don't you sit there? Because she wants to get you on the camera. You don't want me on camera. <laughs> the public wants to see you. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Let me stand over here. <laughs> They're all kidding. The situation in Ocean Pines is that we have some, some lots that are. Um, owned by multiple people, Come on. correct? Right. Now, somewhere in the past, Ocean Pines has decided that these, that any uh, public announcements are only sent to the O1 owner. Now, that O1 owner is not special in any way, except that his name is on the land record first. Could be alphabetic. It could be any way that they put it on the land record. That's Worcester County that did that, okay? So they are getting all the election material, they're getting the ballot, they're getting the newsletters every so often, they're getting any other information. They're getting the bills. Mm -hmm. They're getting the bills, okay. And no one else is that are on the owner list, okay. That doesn't mean the O2 owner, O3 owner, O4 owner is any less important. They just simply are not the first owner on the list. So last year there was an error and all owners got a ballot. Now our bylaws state that one lot, one vote. 
So the issue becomes with the owners who, if there are 10 owners of one lot, they have to decide who's, who's going to vote and what the vote's going to be. That's all fine and dandy. For the election committee last year, it was quite uh, a, an issue because they had to figure out how to take out multiple votes from one lot. So they did. They did a good job and everything was resolved. What we thought this year is now these owners, 951 of them, aren't going to get anything this year. And we thought out of courtesy we should send them a letter and say, yes indeed you are owners, yes indeed there is an election going on, and that you, uh, your first name on your land record is going to receive the material. And just this is just for your information. And also, please know that there's an annual meeting and we urge you to come because they are indeed owners. And many of them, indeed, probably, Dave says they get the vote, the, the bill, but you, are, you can bet that that bill is split up. And the, associa the association receives many times multiple checks to pay that bill. They don't just get maybe one check. They might get a check from each owner to make up the total amount of the bill. So I think we're doing those owners a disservice, number one. It surprised me that they get nothing. They don't even get an association letter, which I think is, is surprising in itself. But um, this, I thought, was a courtesy that we should extend to these people to let them know about voting. We don't want to exclude them. They are owners, just like everyone. So why shouldn't they know about the election in some form? Now this year for the first time in 10 years, this committee did put the printing process on bid. Before that, for whatever reason, it was just handed to one printer and whatever he charged was what they paid. So this year it went out to bid. Um, we did choose a new printer. We did save uh, about $3,000 and um, got a decent product, and I believe that it is now a decent process. So um, the committee has been budgeted $25,000, and only if there's a referendum would I think that that $25,000 would ever be spent. But um, the committee spends, last year because of these extra mailings and everything, it, it ran up to 16000 with uh, the contractor just charging whatever he wanted. This year it's going to be uh, three or four thousand less. So that's the story. I do believe that this is a courtesy. Um, we are not doing anything egregious. There's nothing in this material that is not already a known product. And um, we are not going out of budget. So. May I? <coughs> John, Frank. I mean, we've been having elections in this place for quite a few years. Um, uh, buyers beware. I mean, you know, if you're in with a team, we advertise these elections. There, I don't see the need for it. Right. My, my two cents on this thing is we've got 951 members out there. We ought to be trying to reach out to everybody we can on an ongoing basis. This has uncovered a communications challenge that needs to be fixed. Uh, I don't see the problem with it at all, nor do I think we have any business voting on whether it goes out or not. <laughs> can I ask? Uh, we have. Uh, could, yeah, could you suspend the rules? Suspend suspend the rules the Jim Trouble to come up. Jim Trouble, one Annapolis court. I'm also the chairman of the Bylaws and Resolutions Committee. Uh, some things you may want to consider here. You're going to do this one year and one year only because you're not going to do it. You're going to continue to do it every year. You need to change the resolution mm -hmm. on election yep. because it, it does, in fact, say specifically to send out one one envelope addressed to all parties at the address that's reflected in the... Yeah, so let me, because I read that too, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Judy, what is the cost if we, had to, if we really had to do that? Um, 
I so we know. may end up having to change that. Right. This this resolution, this was uh, done last year, I understand. And I think that that particular recent. sentence was probably put in as a result of the error. That it was, absolutely was. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when, we, when I sat down with the printers to figure out how to do that, he said that if you want to do that, if you want to actually put five names on there, nine names on there, ten names on there, it's going to be done by hand and cost a fortune to do that process. So I did say send it to the O1 name because that way they could use the machine. So I think that the thought process for that MO6 resolution statement was probably the same thought process that I had in an attempt to reach these owners that are other than the O1 owner but it's not a practical process. What can be done is to follow the same process that's used, I believe, with the uh, property tax bills. You continue on as far as you can and then put something like and others on there. It, it, it is not intended to only put the one name on, on the uh, envelope. Let me, let me, I'm going to be finished. Let me make one more comment. I think if you look at the bylaws, and look at the duties of the secretary, you will see that this letter, if it does go out, and I'm not commenting on the letter, it should be go out under the secretary's name, not, not the committee's name. Mm -hmm. Well, may I say that there's a particular problem with that this year? Well, mm -hmm. you can designate another secretary. Yeah, yeah. Why is that a problem? Or we can use, we have it. Less is the secretary. Less is the secretary, and Phyllis yeah. is the you assistant secretary. You can have an acting secretary. secretary. She's you can have, it could be the president. We can, it could, it could be, be the president, president yeah. an acting That's secretary, or anything like that. Uh, okay. You right. know, and Dave brings up another point, that we are setting a precedence here that has not been set to the best of my knowledge in the past, whereas the committee is spending money, even though they have a budget, that is separate and distinct from what other committees have done in the past. They are writing a separate letter that they believe is necessary. We set the policy, and the policy has been well written over the years. So we had a glitch of one in 40 years. It's not the end of the world. I would have to ask how many requests have been made by other than the O1s in the past to get this information. And uh, anyway. uh, have well, I can only go back one uh, one year for certain, but to the best of our knowledge, none. Let me point out and that expect that the letters the letters that were sent out, um, right. In other words, there's been no problem. The, the uh, even in the year where we had the confusion and certainly sending out ballots, you know, multiple ballots is bound to less than ten percent. Uh, were returned. We had less than 10% uh, multiple returns. So in general, 90% of the people weren't really confused. They said, hey, what's this? And we got one, uh, one ballot back. And as, as you say, we have been doing this exactly the same way all of these years. And, and the last, last point okay. is, is, as I think Jim has brought up, uh, it's not only setting a precedent, but from what I hear today, uh, we're going to do, do this every year as a matter of... Well, that's what I'm going to Yeah, and that's what I'm going to ask for. But Judy, this, uh, first of all, this letter is a consequence of last year, correct? Correct. Okay. Did the committee address what has just, David just raised and what I was going to raise even before he did? Is this a one-time thing because of last year? It is. Or did you take, I mean, that's how I'm viewing it. That's, that's how we discussed it as... What are we going to do now if there is some confusion? Now, this election committee monitors the hotline now. It's starting with the delivery of the ballots, okay? So one member of the committee is now on that hotline <coughs> until the deadline of the ballot. So the calls come in to the committee as to questions on about the ballot. Mm -hmm. Last year there were questions. Um, I don't have the data with me. There were questions about the fact that they got a ballot when they never got a ballot before. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. And I don't really have the numbers in front of me, but uh, there indeed were questions. Uh, you, can, you can make the case that yes, of course, it wasn't done before, but it happened. That ballot error happened. And the process of that ballot error, what was discovered was there are over 900 people here who never get any communication. Not even a mm -hmm. newsletter. That's, that's, an no, that's an assumption. That's an assumption. And it's a not an election. My wife and I are both, you know. Yeah. So yeah. 
It's oh, uh, trust um, me, uh, she gets everything. I have a question. Get. Yes, she gives me the bill. Well, we have a discussion going on, but there's no motion. No. So yeah. I'm not quite yeah, sure no, no. what the, what what we're trying to get at here, other than to say some of us like it, some of us don't. I mean, we either have to have a motion on the table to vote this up or down, and <laughs> otherwise, you know, it could go on I philosophically. Well, well, Dave certainly has a right to bring this up, and, and that's why I asked at the very beginning, what are you asking us to do? And I think what I heard you saying is, although there's a formal motion, you're asking us to Inter intervene. The letter has apparently already been held up. I'm not sure by what authority it was held up, but it what was authority was it sent? It's not the point. Or to be sent. It hadn't been sent. Of course, it, it hasn't been sent. It hasn't. I know that. Yeah. And so it's either going to be sent or it's not going to be sent. So. I, by the way, just you know, for clarification, I didn't tell anybody to stop, not send that letter. Okay, because I don't have that authority. Just as I don't think Tom has the authority to tell anybody, to direct anybody. Whoever to send told the letter. him what? The letter has not been sent. Right? Yeah. Did the, did the committee believe the letter had been sent or what? No. I'm asking Judy. I'm, I'm, well. The, <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the ballots went out last Friday, and I wanted to time this letter to go out this week after the ballots. Sure, went right out. after the ballots went out. Okay. So um, I sent uh, the the final copy to Teresa so that it could be run off. Okay. Um, with the, my intention was to come over here this week and make sure that they were packed up and mailed out. Uh, apparently, it was happen. stopped. Right. I, I don't know what happened Monday, to be honest with you. I was not aware of it. I was not called. I don't know. Look, I'm going to weigh in here. Here, here we are. Here, here's my, here, here, look, folks. We have committees that people volunteer to serve on to run certain portions, advisory groups, functions that they do. We've asked them to step up and run it and organize it. This committee is a group of those folks. They have made a decision. They've been obviously managing this process extremely effectively in this process. This committee made this decision. Decision, But to state that a committee to go function and do what they do, get it done correctly, would say that last year the very same elections committee would have had to come back to the board to figure out what they should do with all the The reality is that committee managed it. This committee, if we really want people in this community to step up and serve and run and committees and do work, then we have fact, to allow them, unless they're doing something it is horrendously egregious for us to the board at this point and second guess everything they're doing yeah. uh, I don't agree with it and that that's I think we have no business doing that uh, over I, a, a committee simply because a person doesn't agree or two whatever it is that they should we have 951 I, people I think, I I think allowing a committee to make an independent uh, communication with over 950 of our members Okay, allowing them to do that independently of any is in itself egregious. The uh, all right. okay. historically committees make recommendations. That's all the committees I've been on liaison to. Yeah, and this is like the group make a recommendation. Last year, the very same committee we're talking about handled a situation that was very dicey Which was and brought to the board's attention. And it was brought to the yeah. board's yeah. attention. And approved. And it wasn't a it wasn't formal a, motion. No, I, I was a board member and no, I did was a, did not. There was tacit approval. Yes. You know, Bob yes. Thompson yes. came That's in, told us what, what was going yeah. on, and, and says, and here's how we're yeah. handling because it. Because that was the best way of And we all it. nodded and, and said right. yes. I, I'm going to put a motion on the table just so we can either vote this up or vote this down. I have an air conditioning problem at home. Uh, no heat. I mean, no air conditioning. I make a motion that uh, the election committee letter be approved to be sent up. Second. I'm in agreement with that. Um, and now, for the record, though, um, she seconded. You seconded. No, it's already been seconded. We're in discussion, I assume, right? Yeah, we are now. This doesn't bind us to any particular action in the future either. I'm viewing this as a one-time thing because of last year. That's all. That's that's all. Thing. All right. Can, you, can I ask to amend the motion? I just put something on. So now, we if I say amend the motion, I'm going to have to vote for it. I'm not yeah, going to vote for it anyway. So, <laughs> so, so forget it. I, w I would love to have you say a one-time thing. I want to see you vote the, the simplicity of the big picture here is 
one property, one vote. Yeah. To confuse it to me is unnecessary. Okay. Yeah. And then next year it'll go away. I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. John? No, I, I just put it on so we can vote on it. Yeah, okay. But you're not voting? No. I'm, I'm, I'm voting nay. Well, let's hear all those opposed, please. Yeah. What's the vote? Okay, three. Three opposed? Yeah. And two in favor? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So it fails. It yeah. fails. So that means no. no letter. Yeah. No letter. That's exactly what it means. Mm -hmm. okay. We just needed something to bring it to the end. That's all. <laughs> Who's going to, well, Judy, you take that back to your committee. Yes, yeah, sir. So we'll we thank you. Okay, this election committee is different than your other committees, and I, um, I think that if you're going to say that this communication has to come through you in the future, that's what you're saying. Um, the election committee puts out press releases all along the process. Okay. Now, I could have chosen to do this as a process and just throw it out in the press release, which it had been done last year too. So the question is, is are you questioning the ability of this election committee, which is different from all your other committees, because this committee by bylaw instruction is, is mandated to make sure that every member has an opportunity to vote every year. That's in the bylaws. Is this what you're saying, that press releases can't be sent out also? No, maybe the board needs to approve each press release. Is that maybe what you're saying? Every I don't know. What are you all saying? May I answer the question? Just on the property. I think I believe One that property. election well, well, press. That's, that's the only reason for the confusion. No, wait a second. Please. Go ahead. Press releases are part of the uh, the approved election process as stated in the election uh, resolution. So, in fact, press releases, no. Are not do not have to be, and in fact, the committee has prior authorization to do, to do those releases okay. on on factual information. Okay. Okay. Moving on. It's your lucky day, what? <laughs> Mr. P. Did they cancel the election? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I up? Yeah. The new no, we just qualified one of the candidates, though. I mean, <laughs> okay. let me uh, <laughs> let me pass well, out. Um, I have to leave in 15 minutes. Well, then I'll wrap up in 15 minutes. If that's okay. possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even if it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> You're leaving, right? I'm leaving. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to pass two pieces of paper out first. Um, this one first. What I asked time for was to share with you as board members uh, certain information that I developed during the course of, uh, it's really a follow-up to a question that was raised by um, Joe Reynolds, quite frankly, when he kept asking about the 103, what happened to the 103 um, from the $150 dues increase uh, some years ago. And, and I got into that and I decided to go further back into the archives of Ocean Pines and look at the reserve accounts and see what the track record is and the history. Some pretty interesting stuff there. Um, what this is, and I'm just going to quickly pass over this, this is a, we had various reserve accounts from the very get-go in Ocean Pines, but in 1983 they consolidated them, not consolidated them, they decided to carve out specific reserve accounts for specific purposes. And at that time the reserve for replacements was established in 1983. So all this is, the top seat is simply a summary in discrete period, 7th and 10th, and there it is, fine. Um, the next thing, I'm going to ask Bob Thompson here to dim the lights, somebody please, because I do have a little PowerPoint. Um, I promised uh, Tom that I wouldn't cover the entire thing. This is a handout for the board, okay? So let me hand it out to the board. Uh, it's called a board information piece. Got I think he's got yours. Um, and this is the PowerPoint. The first slide first. Go one at a time here, and then I'm going to skip. Okay. Um, so, as a consequence of my activity in trying to research the 103 question, and then getting more interested in it, going back to the annals of 40 years plus of audited financial statements, and then more recently, there's been there was discussion. Uh, let's flip to the next one. Um, during the course of the budget process for 2012, 
and then more recently during this current board election process, um, and in various uh, opinions and uh, the focus by certain community publications on our whole reserve situation and how it impacts assessments and do we need reserves and do we not need reserves, if we need them, how much, and so forth and so on. And particularly last Saturday when uh, I got certain, got to reading certain things. And I have been asked by various people since last Saturday uh, about certain board policies and, and how we're treating these reserves and why we have them and what about these emergency funds and all that sort of stuff. And I suspect that you also are getting such questions based on some of the public statements that have been made about um, the reserve accounts and do we need any at all? Uh, why don't we just stop with the reserves, okay? So I thought it would be appropriate to put together this package, which I have, which I've handed out, um, setting forth my own, it's not my opinions here, by the way, this is uh, just the facts and history of Ocean Pines and its reserve account. Um, so that's what we're trying to focus on right here. The impact on annual assessments, why do we have reserves? Um, this next one has, the reason for this presentation is there have been various misstatements and misleading information being disseminated, all right? Um, and I believe the membership, particularly in the selection cycle, needs to understand what the real situation and facts are. Um, the voters can decide any which way they want as to who to support for this office or, or for election of the board of directors. Um, I'm not part of the debate as a candidate. On the other hand, I think it's important that the members understand the context in which these reserve accounts uh, are, are operating and what the history is here in Ocean Pines. Um, so that's the reason for the presentation. Some examples of what I'm talking about. Um, these reserves are not for emergency purposes. They are not a rainy day fund. Um, the fact is that each reserve account has a very specific purpose and there are no reserves for emergency general purposes. We simply don't have them. Uh, another thing that is a, a perception, uh, well actually that's a quote, um, that these reserve funds represent, and I quote, a large pot of money with no strings attached. That's simply not true. Uh, the facts are that the bylaws and board resolutions restrict the use of any reserve account to the specific purpose for which it, established, it was established and requires five out of seven votes to approve for another use. Um, third bullet, and there are only four. Uh, funds being raised by annual set increases are not specifically tied to community approved projects. Well, the fact is, community approval is required for projects exceeding 1.6 million, which is in our bylaws, 20% of our annual assessment. And funding is needed, needed for numerous projects that are well below those amounts. And, and so the, those, fun, those uh, reserve funds function in a very specific way for very specific purposes, and they're not just tied to those that qualify for being approved by the, the community by virtue of the bylaws. Uh, a last perception is that uh, our current method is not fair to our members because those who benefit from these assets, these purchases, ought to pay the bill, not the people who purportedly, I guess, uh, are here when they, they're uh, either purchased or constructed and so forth. The facts are under our current method, which has existed since 1983, that the member's assessment each year is based only on the, that year's assets being used. Each asset, there are 1,500 items in Art Carmine, it's a computerized list of depreciable assets. And that 1 20th of this asset and 1 10th of that asset because it's 10 years old and so forth, that's depreciation. And historically followed since 1983 is a concept of each year you tote that up and that becomes the amount by, you're supposed to put in the reserve fund. And that's what's happened since 1983, okay. Why do we have, and again, I'm just gonna go a few more. Why do we have these reserve funds? You all know this, the bylaws spell it out, it provides the authority, it requires two thirds super majority vote to use those funds for any purpose. The bylaws do recognize that there may be situations where for the benefit of the association, it, it's prudent to use them for a different purpose than they were originally set aside. But in which case that requires a two thirds approval of the board, which in our particular case is five out of seven. So that, what are these reserve accounts? I don't think there's going to be any question about whether or not we're over or under reserved in the first four of our five accounts. Because in, in, in total, <laughs> they're, in, they're in negative. The, the checking account, the savings account is overdrawn. We have negative, we have bulkheads and waterways which functions in and out each year 
and at any, the end of any given year, as you know, has a balance. But the idea is to pay as you go in that fund. The roads fund is currently inactive because that's where we used to put the county state money and we funded the half a million dollars a year out of that reserve account. Well, that's relatively inactive now, but it's minus. It's overdrawn, 83 grand. The drainage, we addressed that in a very detailed way during the budget process, um, and, and that's overdrawn too. That's a negative 221. Future projects, which is something that's currently not being used, it was used, for example, in the pool cover project. The monies to fund the pool fund came specifically from a futures project uh, a reserve account, which the board had established for s such purposes. They didn't quite have enough in it, so they borrowed a half million dollars to make up the difference. Okay, I won't get into whether that's a good thing or not. I wasn't around, I wasn't part of the debate, doesn't matter. The point is we have a $58,000 leftover deficit in that particular fund for that. So I think nobody would argue that we have too much money in those accounts. In fact, we're short in the aggregate 180. So it all boils down to this major maintenance and replacement reserve, which has been operating since 1983 in, in, in a consistent fashion. The historic fund is where we put the depreciation in. That's your um, 13, since 1983, your uh, 29 or whatever it is, 28 years worth of putting it in and taking it out. And uh, more recently we've had the five-year funding component because we didn't have quite enough in it in the judgment of the board back then when it adopted it three years ago and we're now in the third year of the five-year plan and that's the 26 of the $30 increases. Um, but we currently have at the end of April 30th, 2011, about two and a half million dollars in that account. A little bit overdrawn in the five-year funding component of it by 132,000. Okay. I'm going to kind of wrap up here because I'm not going to go through all this. Okay. But this is the history of how it works. 1983. <coughs> next one. Um, again, we're just going to whip through these. You see it on your other schedules. 21 million has gone into it. 18 million has come out of it. We're left with the balance. Um, how much should it be? That all depends on, you have to look at what its intended purpose is. You can't say for a college tuition fund for your kids whether it's enough or not until you know what the tuition is. What's the purpose of your account? Your retirement account, how much is enough there? Well, it depends on what you're trying to achieve by your objective. Each one of our reserve accounts, and we're talking specifically here about the replacement reserve account, it has a purpose. And its purpose is only one thing to pay for the major repairs, the pay for the repairs, replacements of those assets. And um, what we have is we've put aside depreciation on all our assets and that's $18 million. Now in truth, some part of that five and a half million is related to the roads, which we don't put into that replacement reserve account. And I don't know whether everybody knows that, but when we compute depreciation for the association, we do not fund the depreciation for the road related capital expenditures. Okay, so we don't put that in the dues. We've been using state monies and that's the problem we talked about earlier. So we just take that off the table. You say the $18 million includes that five and a half. You're really not funding that through the reserve account. So take it off the table. But you're left with twelve and a half million dollars, which theoretically should be in the fund, right? Well, we've got two and a half in it. Okay, so why don't we have two and a half? One word, inflation. No, it's inflation plus the failure of boards previously to retain in that account, in that reserve account, the earnings on those funds. And none of us were on the board at that time, but that Paul, Tom, mm -hmm. you're oh, shadowing me, okay? <laughs> but this is significant. Over this entire period that you see there spelled out, you'll see blanks in the column called interest. So while inflation was rather rampant in <laughs> decades ago, and I remember in one of my own college accounts for my kids having in one year getting 20% on a money market account, okay? Ocean Pines was at that time taking all those earnings, each year taking them out of the reserve fund, putting it over in the operating fund, and using it to lower the assessment. Or not, I beg, not lower the assessment, but to use as a dollars that would otherwise have mm -hmm. to be made up for by, by assessment. Okay. But year after year after year during high inflation and high interest periods, those funds in the reserve account didn't benefit by a nickel. They were all transferred over to the operating fund. That policy changed in 2007 when Bill Zawacki, yeah. who was then treasurer, later became president, Bill said, this is wrong. And he got the board to agree to that, and henceforth they have been retained. Now, 
unfortunately, the interest rate environment, we're getting less than 1% <laughs> of our funds now, okay? Mm -hmm. When we were getting 17 and 18%, it was all being used Nothing. to keep the assessments down. But now, now that it's 1%, it's being retained. It has its impact over decades, okay? Um, Pete, I, done. Yeah. Done. Yeah. done. Yeah. Real quick. I want you, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Pete. You're going to get questions. I'm getting questions. Because quite frankly, when I read some of the stuff about how we're operating these funds, it, it simply said to me, the public needs to understand this is and yeah. how it really works. Okay, it's not this a rainy is, day fund. This is very, uh, this is very relevant. Very relevant. Yeah. Thank you, Dave. I would put this. Thank you. Be, I would have this on the web page for the, you know, of course, the presentation. Yeah. I don't know. Can we do yeah. that? But the, the our membership needs to understand this. It's not about how much do they need for emergency purposes or a rainy day fund. That's not the purpose here. And moreover, we don't have a rainy day. Moreover, fund. the membership can actually do something up close and personal about it when they okay. do understand it. I'm done. Uh, thank you. Moving on to the appointments to committees. <clears throat> my tongue firmly planted in my cheek. I have no idea why we'd e we would ever appoint Jim Trummel back to this committee, but <laughs> uh, why would he want to do that? <laughs> Jim Trummel. Hey, uh, round of applause for Jim yeah, Trummel, absolutely. believe me. <laughs> uh, Jim Trummel and Jill Adino. Yeah. Oh, now, Adino. you realize this means we'll have two attorneys on yeah, the... Yeah, uh, what can uh, I tell you? Uh, pointing to the bylaws committee. Any disagreement? No. None. Chairman approves. It's approved. Yeah, yeah it's approved. Chairman approved. Yeah. CPI, okay, that is mine. Yeah, okay. Updates. This is I have, I have in fact reviewed the contract the with our refuse company. The gentleman who spoke early was is dead on. He obviously had read the contract. There's absolutely nothing in this contract that refers to trucks leaking. However, it does reference uh, shall keep sufficient equipment and employees to efficiently and, eff and effectively collect trash refuge. So, in this contract, it comes due at the end of the year. Uh, Bob, I know you and I are going to uh, have a discussion with these folks. Uh, because clearly it's a problem that needs to be addressed by these guys, whether their contract is up or not. Whether the language is in here or not, they need to address this issue. Uh, and the furlough case, just so everyone knows, the, uh, the case against uh, previous boards and ocean fines was dropped by, uh, or what's dismissed. the effect? Dismissed. With, prejudice. with important two words added, with, with prejudice. prejudice. Yeah. That's yes. very, very significant. Yes. So that has been uh, dismissed with prejudice. Thank, Thank you. you very much for that clarification. And CPI violations. Uh, we have two in the book, or two in your, your folder. Uh, we will we'll remove one, one's complied out. Um, the one that we do need, or we're requesting action on, uh, would be the Kate um, Robin Hood. Yeah. Okay. You see that they have been contacted. Yep. Uh, all the steps have been followed. This one's relatively um, clear. Can't we say this in fewer pieces of paper next time? You know, I was going to say, if we don't act on this, we're going to have to have a special assessment to buy some more paper for the association. <laughs> the picture, 20, the 25 pages. 25 what pages. Would you, what would you like? We don't need that much. No, it, 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 it came yeah, about as previous that. boards because we didn't have enough information. I know, I know. Yeah, I know. So I mean, you know, you're gonna Rule be damned if you do and damned if you don't. A little bit happy in between, though. We don't need to see all the letters. We don't need to see every. Yeah. You need. No, I have you, too many pictures. You need approval to move on. Yeah, you, you need approval. to move on. Yeah. yeah. So we're approving taking legal action. Yes, I'll yes. move approval of that. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Yeah. Uh, uh, opposed? No. Got it. And the other one is off the table, right? Correct. Good. Okay, so we want to take an action on the one? Correct, yeah, this can fly out. Public comment. Before you do it, I have to leave, so I just okay, want to, this is uh, I honored your commitment. I know you did, I appreciate that, sir. It was very hard. Uh, I, I just, uh, this is my final board meeting, and unfortunately I have an air conditioner that's gone to put, so I have to leave. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to serve the members of the association. 
it's been a challenge in three years at times it's been fun I've gotten some things through some things haven't been but I do believe one thing the board members that I have served with have only had the best interest of the association as a whole at heart not everybody may agree with that at times but I do believe that to be the truth in addition uh, there's very much this staff is very committed to the Pines mm -hmm. members uh, we're sorely going to miss Kerry Nelson when he moves on. Uh, Teresa has been great in doing marketing uh, additions. Uh, a lot of people have commented that the Pines itself looks a lot better today than it did a few years ago. Uh, so I just want to say again, thank you very much, and I wish you all the best as I step out. Thank, thank you, John. You. Thank you. If anybody wants to contribute to my new air conditioner, I'd be happy to. <laughs> John, Bye forever. John, you know this is not your final meeting. We are going to have another meeting, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have about five, <laughs> last regular meetings. five special <laughs> meetings. <laughs> Four <laughs> close. Dave, okay, remember yeah, August 4th last read. year? I the witness. Yeah. <laughs> Stevens Duke. Just in the interest right. of time. Uh, yeah, Jack, Jack Levering, Six Weeping Mother Court. Dog Park Guy. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> Extraordinary. <laughs> Extraordinary. <laughs> Uh, in the interest of time, I'd like to thank the board and Bob for his wonderful presentation and the courage to go ahead and, and, and take a stand on this wonderful amenity. I think the dog owners will be very pleased. I think you'll be pleased with the final product once we get this done. We'll certainly work with it in accord with Bob and the board for the details and the uh, necessary things that we need to do to get this thing going. Uh, We'd like to start some serious uh, money raising now. The committee can do that. My people have said, hey, we're afraid to go ahead with this because yeah. the board hasn't put their stamp of approval. We'll so I thank you for that. The committee thanks you for that. And in that regard, I have little slips that are asking for donations. Bring it on. <laughs> so if you pass those around, you got I appreciate it. it. <laughs> and thank you for your support very much. Thank you. Thank you well Mr. done. Well, yes, Paul. Uh, Jeff Nepper. 1210 Carrollton Lane. Um, I'd like to make a kind of a, maybe it's a final comment on Carrollton Lane. Uh, I understand it was a difficult problem and a difficult issue. Uh, I will tell you, having owned several properties back in, in that part of the Pines, that when you bought, representations were absolutely made about traffic calming and pointing down to the end of the road. So I don't know what evidence of that there is, but I can tell you as a recipient of that, they made those representations. Whether I would have bought had I known, the answer is I don't know, probably yes. That's not a big thing in life. The thing that troubles me the most about this is that we took a commitment that was made to residents and we dispensed with that in your decision. You talked about it, I know, several times. Uh, I've been in Florida recently for a while, but I watched all the videos. You talked about it, I know it was a difficult issue. But at the end of the day, you dispensed with the representation that was made to people as a part of the bargain when they bought their lot. Now, you may want to talk to legal counsel about that, but if I were you, I might want to say something about that to future owners in Ocean Pines. Something along the lines of, you need to be aware that representations that are made to you in the course of buying your property may be changed by later actions of board of directors. And I don't mean to imply that there's anything improper in that. But what could become improper is if people don't know that that's a possibility. <clears throat> You took a representation that somebody made to me, and you said it didn't matter. So if I were you, I would look into that, and you might want to put out some material that says to the rest of the folks, be aware, if someone makes a representation to you, that may or may not be solid for all time. And I know conditions change, and I get that conditions changed that much here um, and I, I I don't agree with the decision that you made I would buy it I'm not going to fuss I would have gone one way totally 
griping the entire way had you made that decision. But I would have done that. I follow the law. But I don't like what you did. I don't think it was right. And I would consider the association putting that little gentle warning out there because you did change things. Thank you, Tom. I've got some quickies on the Doug Slinger on 8 Cove Lane. Uh, I worked for a company for a number of years that did uh, assessments of uh, reserves. And uh, I might want to say that traditionally and historically, nationally, that they're traditionally underfunded in order to make ownership in the association economically feasible. How is the shortfall covered? Tradi typically, special assessments. Just a comment on the side. Uh, these others are requests probably directed at Bob Moose. Uh, the status report, please. Uh, Mike Howell's replacement. What's happening with that? Question. You want the answer now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, what's we're, happening with it? We're evaluating our current situation, and, and I'll make a uh, uh, I'll make that final determination. Coming up. As a, yeah. Okay. How about the uh, scoreboard installation? Do you know anything about that? Yeah, it's been ordered. Uh, I don't know when it's. I don't know when it's. And bleachers also. <laughs> bleachers. Yes. Same yeah, thing. I had to think. Yeah, I had to think on that one. I know the scoreboard has. I believe the bleachers have as well, uh, but I'll have to follow up on that one. Okay. Uh, I'm wondering here. The taco night is very good. I've partake a couple times now. Mm -hmm. yeah, ate too many. But uh, whatever happened to the, what I thought was very popular hamburger night? Whatever happened to that? I guess I, I don't, I don't Consider know. Consider reinstating it. I always thought you had a crowd there for that thing. Drank too much beer with the hamburger. <laughs> also, uh, is there a kayak concession up at the swimming racket that operates those kayaks there? There is. There is. There is. is that the only place there? There is a concession. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. And yeah, you can get you can rent them. Teresa has a, um, a yeah, black card. Yeah, it's 15 card. bucks an hour they charge her. Okay. And the you. kayak lessons are coming along sometime in the future. <laughs> Joe, go ahead. Uh, Joe Reynolds, yes, 84 sir. Ward Town Road. Uh, I believe that President Terry's comment at the beginning of the discussion or toward the end of, I guess, about the Yacht Club or head on. I don't think there's a lot of people who have supported the general manager's initiative at the Yacht Club, and I don't think anybody has been more supportive of that initiative since its inception. I was those among those, including Mr. Gumsack, I believe, and others, who thought that the best course of action would be Casper take over all of our food and beverage operations. When the board agreed to let the general manager attempt to run the yacht club, the beach club. Um, I wasn't particularly in favor of that idea, but once the board decision was made, I gave it my whole support. It no longer has my whole hearted support, and I'll tell you why. <coughs> I, number one, that it would require a first class manager over at the yacht club. The board doesn't want to address the issue, but we don't have good management at the Yacht Club. I'm not talking about Bob. I'm talking about the current manager of the Yacht Club. Um, he's, the, uh, he's the guy that's got to make this work. And I said right at the beginning, putting all our apples into that man's abilities was a mistake, and I believe that's been proved true. Uh, Pete Gumsack mentioned about it. We're still early. If you think about it, you say, oh, gee, this is like a month of the year. But think about this. We have three months to make money. If you look at our over the last 20 years, if we don't make money in June, July, and August, we're out of luck. Today is July the 20th. We don't know right now what July is going to bring. We, it's beyond our ability almost right now to do anything about July. So two-thirds of the time that we have something here is gone as a practical matter. While it is the only month of the year, the initiative at the Yacht Club began last Thanksgiving. In 
wonderful job, in my view, of creating an atmosphere and a PR campaign, advertising campaign, or whatever you want to do it, to give people in this community a much better impression and let them there and give this place a shot. I think you did a wonderful job at that. Now, but all of that is useless. I shouldn't say useless, but all of that, if you financial end, doesn't mean a lot unless that enthusiasm about the place corresponds to increased increased sales, uh, reduced losses, or however you want to put it. Bob, you didn't present the numbers today, but I believe the numbers for June something on the order of 20% increase in sales. And you like to play out the positive. It's a positive. Percent increase in sales. this to have worked, your will work. And I, and I discussed this with you in the past, I've talked to you about it. We had to do extremely well during the months. We had to do double or triple what we were doing in the past in terms of our bottom line in order for that to work and be open the year from 6 in the morning to 11 at night. At some point when you had the people there in the summer, you've got to make a ton of money. We're not. A lot of anecdotal stuff going around, uh, and I've had my own. My wife and I have gone to the Yacht Club on two different occasions, reflecting what I think what you said. We went over there specifically to eat upstairs in the upstairs dining room. Early anecdotal. I don't know what other people said. One night we walked in there, and the little gal at the front desk said, "said like a table, like a table for four, like to sit upstairs. Upstairs is closed. What about downstairs?" We're not seating anywhere right now. I look around the corner, there's empty tables. Little girl at the desk, she says, oh, well, the waitress is too busy, which belies the fact that we're talking about reducing labor. I mean, when you think, it's comical in nature. Joe, I gotta um, be fair, keep, keep. Pardon? Time, I gotta be fair, uh, on. I, I, you know I get your point. I Don't get mad, I understand. Just, you know, if we had 50 people here waiting to get, you th this, 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 about five minutes. All right, keep going. It's a, no, I don't say anything else. Okay. It, it's, come on. Yeah. Needed. Motion to adjourn. Wait, no. Oh, no, no. Pete, will you share your uh, Absolutely not. Okay. Thank you. I suggest yeah. that it put it on the page. Yeah. I think but yeah, I'll, I'll, I will. Thank you. I'll have it today before right. you leave. Right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.